Hello and welcome to the Real World Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Cameron. This is the Real World YouTube channel. Go ahead and check out all of our other videos. Give us a like, hit that subscribe button down below, hit the bell so you can get notifications of all our videos. If you're a movie fanatic like me, uh, then you'll no doubt get a lot out of this channel. Returning with us is Bert. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great, Cam. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us again. Uh, Bert is a big uh, film score fan like I am, so this is going to be a fun conversation. All right, before we get started on our film score discussion, we wanted to mention some movie news this week, some things that hit the, uh, the internet that uh, have some fans talking. <laughs> One, the first thing that I'll mention is a uh, release date was announced for two films. They're coming out on the same day. And I find it very interesting that these two films were going to be released on December 20th, 2024. So we're looking ahead a couple years, but it's Avatar 3. So the third of James Cameron's oh. Avatar films and Sonic 3. So Sonic the Hedgehog oh. is getting another uh film Th these two movies have made a ton of money uh it's kind of surprising and so I mean, both sonics are good i haven't seen the second one yet but i like the first one quite a bit uh more than <laughs> i thought both, i would they're both funny yeah, yeah really, for sure i really want to see the second one i really enjoyed um jim carrey i thought he was just great yeah and uh so it's more of the same then i think you'll like it okay uh, probably almost just as much Great, great. Yeah, the trailer looks good. So I'm definitely looking forward mm -hmm. to streaming it. I think it's might be streaming now. I need to check. Um, so yeah, it it, it's one of those things that is interesting that, you know, to, uh, you know, they're both the third entry in a franchise, and we haven't seen how Avatar 2 is going to perform yet. But, uh, you know, these are these are both, I guess you consider them big franchises, really. I mean, Sonic is doing big numbers um and i mean not quite as big as the first avatar obviously one of the biggest movies of all time but uh it's it's always interesting to see what kind of competition uh they're dealing with on, on these opening weekends and one of them could end up moving uh, you know the least, move. Yeah, yeah yeah they could you know shift it a week or something like that but um it, it'd be good alternative viewing i guess you know kids don't want to go see avatar they don't really care yeah. about that stuff. So families can go see Sonic and mom and dad can go see, uh, you know, uh, Avatar. So um, yeah. which one were you going to see opening weekend? I think I know. Out of those two? Well, yeah. I mean, I got to see Avatar too. I absolutely. I mean, yeah. Cameron makes a movie every 26 years. <laughs> right. So you got to come out for that for sure. Exactly. I was going to mention something about franchises too. You know, I feel yeah. like studios all the time are sort of throwing out a, a picture and, and hoping that it's the next franchise right. most of the time or a lot of the time it doesn't pan out so they're yeah. like okay well that didn't work maybe right. we can do this and maybe that'll yeah. turn into a franchise right. so I, I almost feel like uh they accidentally created a franchise with yeah. sonic because right I, I i don't know if you heard uh not to get too much into sonic but uh you know before it came out there was this backlash because the trailer had this really strange looking sonic <laughs> yes and i think i went out and watched part of it or something at one point but yeah. the fans really didn't like it. And he didn't right. look like he does now. And they yeah. fixed, they actually fixed it. They did. Yeah. That was a big thing. I remember that yeah. trailer dropping and people just going nuts. Why does he look like this? They tried to make him look too human, uh, oh, smaller oh, eyes. He had like very gotcha. weird mouth uh, and teeth, you know? And uh, so, mm -hmm. yeah, they actually, there's an entire um, segment of this new, have you heard of the new Chip and Dale movie, Rescue Rangers on Disney plus? So Chip and Dale, no. you know, the 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 characters from the Disney animation. Chipmunks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. the chipmunks. They they uh yeah. they got a movie which is mm -hmm. loosely it's it's kind of meta. It's about them, but in the movie they are actors in the show that they were in in the 90s. Oh, really? So, okay. Yeah, That's it's interesting. It's okay. very interesting. Um, but huh. Sonic, they they call him ugly Sonic, is in the movie. Um, and he has an actually great. interesting part in the film so if wait you now have... is it made by the same studio yeah it's a or... disney film yeah it was released on disney plus a couple months ago okay i don't know i was thinking sonic was paramount oh yeah was... sonic is is a different studio and that's yeah. it's one of those things kind of like who framed roger rabbit where it's like mickey mouse and bug bunny bugs bunny are in the same movie yeah so, okay did, so it is from the other studio they did all this licensing deals with all these oh, other studios so okay. they could use <laughs> different characters sonic. 
<laughs> yeah, that's good. That's it good. is. You should watch it. It's Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers is actually a pretty funny film. I really so it's out it. now already. Is what it's you're out. It, yeah, you can watch it right now on Disney Plus. Okay, I'll have yeah. to check that yeah. out for you sure. You should. You should. <laughs> Another bit of news I wanted to mention. I'm a big fan of the Kung Fu Panda movies. I think those are really hmm. fun. Jack Black. I saw the first one. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. he's great in that role. And I really enjoyed mm-hmm. those movies. So they announced the fourth one is being made, oh. um, which it's it's been, I think, I want to say at least five, six years since the last one. So, okay. Uh, and that kind of wrapped up the story. So I'm really curious to see how they're mm-hmm. going to continue that franchise. But um, Jack Black is going to come back, of course, as Poe, the panda. And okay. so I am curious about that. That's also set for a 2024 release. Mm, 2024 okay yep yep another big one that was announced this movie has been in what's called development hell for a very Mm -hmm. long time uh it's called the fall guy and it's based on the 80s tv series oh yeah um which i wasn't aware of until i was reading up on this Uh, i guess that series was a pretty popular series in the 80s and um it's about hollywood stuntmen who moonlight as bounty hunters Oh, so really? It's, yeah, I never it's watched a, the show, so I didn't I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, it's an interesting premise that they have there. Um, but hmm. they've announced that David Leach is going to direct it. He just got finished making Bullet Train um, that we talked about last week with Brad Pitt. And uh, he's he's cast Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt as the stars of this film. So two big actors an up and coming hmm. director. I think they've got all the ingredients for a great movie there that's coming out also in in 2024 i was looking into you know good yeah yeah it could be i was looking into the directors that have gone through uh back since 2010 we've had uh martin campbell up for it uh and then we had mcg uh was going to direct it with the rock Uh, the rock was going to star in this so Mm -hmm. it's gone through different hands over the years i guess they've been developing the script and now it's finally at a place where they like it and they have the hmm. director and the stars signed on now. So it looks like it's going to start shooting at the end of the year. Okay. Yeah. That that possibly could be good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to that one. All right. So now it's time to jump into our film score discussion. We wanted to t- start off by talking about how we chose our film scores, our top 10 of all time which was very difficult for me. I don't know if it was as difficult for you, but I went yeah, through it was pretty tough. tons of movies. I listened to stuff all week long and watched mm-hmm. movies. One thing that was really cool that I got to do was uh, uh, some of the Blu-rays I have about, I think 18 of the movies I own have isolated scores. Yeah, so, yeah those are nice. Yeah, I was able to put the movie in, it strips out all the dialogue, all the sound mm-hmm. effects, and you just get yeah. to watch the movie with the score over top of it. And it was really fascinating. I, I had a great time doing that. I did it with many movies this week. Uh, so that was really fun. And that really highlights the role the music plays in the film and uh, how impactful it is. So Here's how I went about it. Um, you know, okay. music is is very emotional. Obviously, that's kind of mm-hmm. uh, to me the main thing that that music does is it highlights whatever emotion is being presented on screen. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, a great film score it tells the story of the movie through music, through musical notes, and it enhances everything we feel um, while we're watching the film. So to me, when you hear the music, if you're just hearing the music by itself without the images, it should remind you of the images and it should make you feel the way you felt while you were watching the movie. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those. It's the main to me, really, it's it's the main thing that supports the film and uh, and kind of, um, again, just enhances everything that we're seeing. So it gives you a, a sense of, of the atmosphere and the tone of the story. You know, if it's a comedy, it's going to, the music's going to kind of sound funny. If it's scary, the movie's going to be scary. You know, if it's exciting, it should, mm-hmm. it should kind of get your blood pumping um, and, and that kind of thing. So, you know, that, that's kind of what I was thinking about um, as I was listening to some interviews, I got to listen to a, um, a couple with uh, Spielberg uh, talking about his collaboration with John Williams. They've got a 
long running collaboration. Uh, yeah, and yeah. he was talking about the spotting session. Uh, the spotting session is when the director and the composer get together and watch the movie, the raw footage that they've shot that has no music in it at all. And they decide which scenes need music. And so it's a very interesting process that they go through as they're watching the film. They're, you know, kind of decide, OK, this definitely needs music over top of it. And should we cut the music out here? Yeah, I don't think we need it there. So it's this whole collaboration that they go through um, mm. while they are watching, you know, just the. That's the very of- interesting because from what I gather of, of a lot of behind the scenes stuff I've watched, um, a lot of directors will actually borrow from other scores or other soundtracks or you know yes. needle drops and they'll they'll place them throughout uh just sort of like a temp track yep and exactly then, um and then some composers have even said that uh the music from this movie was played over it the first time i heard it and the director said do something like that <laughs> right right exactly yeah. but yeah but continue yeah 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 so some some directors do like doing it that way um others don't yeah. others prefer <laughs> Let right, the composer right. go in cold and come up with something totally new. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's it's different for every movie, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that that is an important part of the process for sure. Um, so yeah, I just think knowing when to use music and when not to use mu- music is extremely important, and that's an important yeah. role that the, the the composer plays in uh, the creation of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, the, the composer obviously has to be able to collaborate with the director, um, and support the director's vision for the movie, um, and help him realize mm-hmm. that completely. That's kind of uh, another, another part of his role. Um, if I can interject there too. Yeah, sure. Uh, you may have come across this in some of your research, but there have been entire scores that have been written that were rejected sure. uh, by directors Yes, and, and you can find those out there. They're, they're rare. They're hard to find oh, okay. but with YouTube. It's not that hard right, not right. to find them, but even some really famous, in fact, one or more on my list here that I have of uh, favorite uh, composers, mm. even some of their scores have been rejected. Wow. Um, and then a different, a different uh, composer comes on and writes the score yeah. that apparently the director wanted. And so that rejected one is never released. Uh, right. You never hear it really. Yeah, that, that is incredible. I did come across that several times as I was looking through mm. some of these. I love to be a fly in the wall in that room, <laughs> yes. though. You know, you get done with the entire because these are entire scores because I've sure. listened to some of them. Yeah. Uh, and and the, the 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 fight probably that takes place between right. the composer and the director. Well, you yeah. know, well, you said you wanted it to be this. This is <laughs> right. what I get. This is what I've written you. Yeah. yeah but that's not what I was talking about. I can right. only imagine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What a difficult thing <laughs> oh. to go through. I could not imagine. Um, yeah. I'm sure oh, yeah. after a while you get used to it, you know, and, but yeah, that's gotta be a difficult uh, process to go through, but these collaborations are so important. And that's why you see directors and composers working together so many times over and over and over again, right? Spielberg and Williams over and over and over they've worked. Yeah. Silvestri yeah. and Zemeckis over and over they work together because they kind of mm-hmm. get this bond. They get in this groove where they kind of understand what the other one wants. So they don't run into that issue you know right um right. so that that's an interesting thing to look at all these collaborations that have happened uh, over time so uh you know i i'm sure uh like we mentioned before there's going to be some overlap between us there'll probably be some overlap uh with some of our favorite films of all time which as this whole series of videos we have sure. podcasts where we've gone through our favorite movies of all time and on those podcasts, we've brought up the score many times as well. So those, yeah, those yeah. may overlap here as well, which which uh, which will be great to, to discuss further. Um, so, yeah, uh, all in all, that's kind of my philosophy on it. it okay. It's, you know, the, the music should always remind you of the film um, mm-hmm. and, you know, an iconic kind of memorable piece of music uh, going along with the set of images um, that comes to your mind. That's what makes a great film score for me. Yeah. Um, so what was, what was your kind of thought process? Yeah. yeah. Well, a little bit of background, uh, you know, I, I've for years and years, I've, I've collected, um, certain, uh, film scores on CD. And I should mention that I'm the only person that I've probably ever met that does. I mean, maybe every once in a while, yeah, but most, I people, do too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> most people though are going to buy the top gun, top gun soundtrack. You know, they're not going to buy, uh, the background music, you know, right, right. So, exactly. Uh, sure. Yeah. But, but, you know, I'm, I'm discerning. I mean, I, I look for the stuff that I, that I like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you hear it in the movie, so you get a sampling of it ahead of time. Right, right. Um, in my case, uh, 
Um, I, I kind of stopped buying CDs like that in 2015. So there's a lot of scores probably in the last seven years that I need to kind of get up to speed on. I've heard some good ones in the movies, but I haven't gone back and researched them. Yeah. So most of these are going to be sort of prior to 2015. Okay. Um, and uh, one one caveat I should mention too, um, I don't really uh, tend to get into the real happy scores. Like you mentioned that they're usually very emotional and that kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, there's serviceable scores for comedies, you know? Sure, uh, sure. But those are never, ever really the ones that I'm going right. to purchase or listen to independently of the film uh, for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, I like the, honestly, I, I tend to like the darker tones um, sure. that come out in scores sometimes. Yeah. They're kind of like, therapy to me you know mm. they, they kind of help me channel inward a little bit sure uh they really sort of help you like feel um the experience of that movie and yeah. it's usually something pretty deep you know so right. these aren't right mine aren't going to be real like happy light <laughs> picks and those sure. are out there yeah, yeah uh, you yeah. know for, for that <laughs> for that standpoint um i i don't really get into classical music too much either because most mm. of it's pretty light and happy you know yeah. something you'd have over dinner you know and that kind of right. thing uh and, and it's not bad music it's just i don't really tend to listen to it i like the stuff that really sure. brings the the emotion train you know what right, i mean right sure sure um yeah. and uh you know and and then i've also gathered from behind the machine behind the scenes material uh from a lot of composers that uh they feel that if the viewer doesn't notice the score then they've done their job and mm, yeah. uh, it's interesting because that's their goal and yet what we're doing is we're, we're trying to notice these, <laughs> sure, these sure. scores. So to some yeah. extent, I mean, I get what they're saying, but yeah. there's times where, uh, you know what I mean? Those, the standout ones that we're about to talk about where, yeah. uh, despite their efforts of trying <laughs> to blend in, we've, we've, you know, taken notice. Right. Okay? So right. sure. Just a few things like that. So a couple of things I used to evaluate, um, what my top 10 scores were of all time. Uh, one of them is, um, it has to, have multiple great themes. I've got a whole separate list, I guess I could give you that has one singular theme that's uh, sort of redone throughout the film. Meet Joe Black right. is one I watched recently. Oh, okay. It's a beautiful theme. It yeah. comes in several times. And, and once you watch the movie a few times, you're like, yeah, this is really just kind of the same theme, theme over and over. Right. Or sure. maybe they'll do it with a trumpet this time or a flute yeah. the next time. You know what I mean? Right, right. So there's plenty of those. I'm talking about scores that have um, themes running throughout, not yeah. just one sort of, you know, 30 second bit, you know? Right. Exactly. So, yeah. So a second uh, idea I brought to this was that um, there's those soundtracks that are sort of half score and half soundtrack. So, so like, right. um, I guess Top Gun's a good example because Top sure. Gun, I mean, that's mostly soundtrack. So maybe that's not the best example. Yeah. Uh, I will say the film Labyrinth. I absolutely mm. love, I do like the, the music by David Bowie too, but, <laughs> sure. but the, the, the score by Trevor Jones is tremendous, yeah. but it's kind of half and half. So I, I, right. I threw that out cause uh, yes. it's not really just a, a film score. And then the, the last thing is that um, the best ones to me are the ones you can listen to all the way through. So you've got uh, ones like Batman begins, which has some tremendous music. Mm. Um, the village has some tremendous music, mm -hmm. but there's parts that are just like, like in your face horror you know yeah and, and you yeah. can't really put that on and have sort of an enjoyable right. listening experience <laughs> sure. like when people are walking through the room and they're like what are you listening to <laughs> right. you know so unfortunately they get kind of cast out here but they're yeah. absolutely phenomenal scores but yep. but only for the non sort of craziness so yeah that's exactly. what i've got yeah yeah i tried to look at stuff i can hum you know that that was kind of a, mm. another priority that's for a me good one Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I like, I like the stuff that you mentioned there, um, about, yeah, the soundtrack stuff, because yeah, there, there are some that have a lot more soundtrack and, and less mm -hmm. score or kind of a mix of the two. And yeah, I stayed away from those. I stayed away from musicals completely. I feel like that's a totally oh, separate yeah. category. Sure. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah, this is just instrumental, uh, film scores is, is what we're looking at yeah. here. All right, so that is our philosophy behind how we went about picking these film scores. Now we're going to jump into our top 10 favorite film scores of all time. Bert, why don't you kick us off? Great. Um, my number 10 is A Beautiful Mind by James Horner. We just Excellent. talked about this film. We sure did. Uh, and and uh, this is just a great, uh, it's like the ultimate suspense score to me. Uh, there's a very liberal use of minor chords, which gives us kind of this melancholic nature too almost like a haunting uh nature of it yeah. uh he uses charlotte church's vocals um throughout mm -hmm. it's almost like uh, a lot of these um composers will sometimes take a 
a, a vocalist and sort of make their voice kind of one of the instruments. Right. And um, especially kind of in the early 2000s, that was kind of a trend. Sure. And uh, he uses her voice. Uh, yeah, I think Titanic well. kicked that off. Uh, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's a perfect example. Yeah, perfect example. Yeah. Uh, the score has more piano than most on my list. Mm. Um, not that I'm against, you know, piano scores per se. Sure. Uh, but it's just a, it's just a brilliant um, sort of marriage of of piano um, expedients and, and orchestra at the same time. Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, I would say James Horner's best score. So that's what I got for number 10. I, I, I don't know Excellent. if you recall any of the music from it. I do. I've only seen the movie once. Yeah, I just watched mm -hmm. it for the first time last week. But uh, yeah, I was definitely yeah. paying attention to the music and uh, very well done. Yeah, some of I, I would agree some of Horner's best for sure. He's done a lot of good ones, but that one was was up there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to listen to it again because I've, I've only heard it one time, but uh, I, I, I did stand out uh, as being particularly good. Um, so, yeah, that's a that's a great way to kick us off. Good number 10. Yeah, All right. For 10. Yeah, my number 10 is The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Um, uh, this is a score that initially was not on my list. My wife mm. is going to be very happy that I ended up including it because she was <laughs> shocked when I told her my top 10. She said, uh -huh. where's Lord of the Rings? Wait, you have to put Lord of the Rings on there. I was like, well, <laughs> it's good. But yeah. and then I went back mm -hmm. and re-listened to it and I was instantly transported back to Middle Earth. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it is such a well done score by Howard Shore um you know this won the oscar for best original score that year yeah. uh, and it's well deserved i mean so many great themes in there it is uh really interesting because sure he I, I didn't really i knew his name obviously but i didn't really know about his history and i went back and oh he's done a ton of horror um, Oh, really yeah he he works very closely with david cronenberg um, oh. So scanners, Videodrome, uh, The Brood, all these old, you know, horror films mm. that is where he kind of got his start. I and it's interesting. That. Yeah, it's interesting that he, you know, is able to do this here because there is a lot of horror elements in the score, especially when we go to Isengard and we see mm -hmm. the orcs and we see Saruman and um, Sauron. So it's really, really well done. But it's amazing that he's able to do the Hobbit stuff so well. So mm -hmm. when we go to the Shire, it's totally different. It, there's these night and day yeah, um, yeah. differences between, you know, the good guys and the bad guys. Right. Uh, the contrast between good and evil is so, so present in his score. Yeah. Um, and it's just very well done, very emotional. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and it's just, uh, but it has this kind of haunting aspect to it as well. So just yeah. very well done, very exciting. It, it can get big and grand and epic. It can get very small and intimate um just a great orchestral you know score um i i mentioned you know uh, the 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 different locations also kind of have their each have their own flavor um mm, which i think yeah. is something he did very well you instantly know where you are just by yeah. listening to the score um right. so yeah all in all just a, a, an excellent excellent uh score there from shore um some of my favorite tracks off of this um score concerning hobbits um, Lothlorien and the Caverns of Isengard. Mm -hmm. uh, those are some ones you can go take a listen to that I really enjoyed. So yeah, yeah that's it's, that's my number ten. Yeah, and it, it's great music. It's one I yeah. considered for mine as well. Yeah. Um, if if it's you know it's not my top ten, it's probably definitely in my top twenty or thirty. Yeah, I love yeah. the music from from all three of those films. Really. Yeah, yeah, me too. They're they're all great. All right, what's your number nine? My number nine is The Illusionist. It's hard oh. to say. Uh, Philip Glass. Um, okay. And uh, it's it's a uh, another great mystery score. Um, yeah. Uh, I chose this score uh, because it's fairly unique. It's kind of hard to describe. Uh, it's one of these scores that kind of dances around the notes a lot, um, mm. kind of playfully and yet almost methodically, mathematically. Yeah. Um, Philip Glass, uh, you know, back in the 60s and 70s, he would do a lot of these really creative pieces that had that were almost um it's kind of hard to explain just kind of almost mathematical in nature interesting um, yeah very like precise and yeah exposition or uh, yeah extrapolations i mean okay of, okay of, of continued extrapolations it's just hard to describe yeah yeah uh, so that's kind of what he's known for and he's mm. got this score um the truman show is another one that's oh. uh also very good and i considered um yeah uh that one's maybe a little too schmaltzy to, to okay. be in my top 10 but it's sure. another great one but yeah. and this one's more mysterious i guess yeah. than truman but right. um just the main themes are uh, memorable and 
I don't know, just glorious. The, the film is, I think, a number seven on my all time list. And uh, mm. he's what, sort of the one of the lesser known uh, masters. He yeah. doesn't, doesn't get the exposure like some of the other composers have with film, right. at least in the last 20, 30 years. But sure. um, this one's a masterpiece. In my opinion, um, he takes what's basically a period drama and almost makes it like a fantasy film because oh. of, of sort of the strangeness of his score that he brings. Yeah, that's cool. That, that's a movie I've only seen once and I really enjoyed it. Um, so I really want to go back and watch it. And now mm-hmm. I definitely will just uh, to listen to the music because, uh, yeah, that sounds very interesting. All right, we're on to my number nine which is Once Upon a Time in the West. Oh, this is okay. a 1968 score by Ennio Morricone, uh, an Italian oh, yeah. composer, yeah. very mm-hmm. popular. He, uh, his most famous score, of course, is uh, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, uh, which mm-hmm. is an all-time classic that anyone can hum. Uh, I think sure. you just say, those, say the title of that film and that piece of music instantly comes into your head. But this one, I think, is better. I think it's not only oh. a better score, I actually think it's a better film. And it's another collaboration with Sergio Leone, who's an Italian director um, who's known for his spaghetti Mm. Westerns. And this is like his ultimate Western. It's just uh, him going all out. It's an epic over three hours long. They they did such a great job with this very different process. This score was created before they shot a single frame of film. He actually wanted him to record music for it first. Hmm. And then they played the music on set for the actors. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and I different. I don't know if oh. I've ever heard of that happening before. Yeah. Um, no, I know no, of no, no, directors no. who play music on set, but it's usually uh-huh. not the actual film score that ends up being in the movie. So yeah, yeah just an incredible uh-huh. uh, collaboration here between these two. Such a unique um, and very close collaboration. They worked on so many movies together. And um, yeah, this is my favorite. It's It's that very much that good the bad and the ugly feel um the kind of classic western feel you know they're using guitars they're using all kinds of different uh instruments here uh Hmm. this one heavily features the harmonica because there's actually a character in the film whose name is harmonica he's played by charles bronson and he carries around the harmonica he does he plays it in the movie that's part of his character yeah and so it's one of those interesting ones where the music the film score is actually music in the film that the characters are hearing that the characters are playing in an interesting way. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting in that way. And and it does a great job of building (laughs) suspense. You know, it's, it's just that, that very kind of classic iconic classic sound of the Western. As soon as I hear uh, or think about a Western, this is kind of what I hear. Um, Some tracks I like on this one is El Grande Massacre. Uh, There's another one called Jill. Uh, which is for uh, Claudia Cardinale's character. And then, of course, there's a track called Man with a Harmonica, which is also very good. Yeah, I'll have to listen to that. I, I like that composer. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me a little bit um, when you said that they end up, the actors in the movie that themselves end up sort of incorporating that theme. Yeah. I have seen that before, like in Bicentennial Man, which I think oh. that's James Horner, I yeah. think. Um, uh, there's a character that's playing a piece on the piano um, right. and that sort of rolls into like they sort of fade out from the scene but then it rolls into the theme so you know that oh, that uh, has yeah. been done in, uh, in other newer films too sure. but it's kind of a different it's a different choice different way to go for sure yeah yeah it is it mm-hmm. is yep all right on to your number eight Bert what you got my number eight is Daylight by Randy Edelman this is uh the Sylvester Stallone movie from 96 I want to say 97 okay yeah I've uh, heard of it I haven't seen the, it uh, Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I think it's one of his best films, oh, okay. um, but it's, it is more of just sort of a straightforward action disaster film. It's okay. the tunnel caves in between uh, the underground tunnel between New Jersey and New York. Oh, and he's a, a fire and rescue guy and has to go in and save some people. Gotcha. So, uh, but this score, um, it's actually, it's, um, it's mostly electronic in its mm. use of instruments, um, which isn't my preference, but it just has so many themes uh, mm. uh, that are just emotional and just very memorable. To me, it's admirable when a um, a score writer takes time to write numerous themes because there's so many that I so many movies that I watch that that one theme is really great. Yeah, uh, but it's only one theme. So sure. uh, I just wanted to point that out again that I I don't really understand why that is. Yeah, uh, but you should, sometimes you get the one great theme and then the rest is just 
background stuff that you don't yeah, really hear sure. or pay attention to. Right. So, and I think maybe directors like I want one, one really good theme, yeah. bring that to me. Sure. Uh, I'm thinking that's what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, but in any case, just just the abundance of different themes in this, and they're just great uh, tunes. Randy Edelman um, has done some really great ones, and he's another one that people probably don't really know uh, who he is or had never really heard his name because he mm -hmm. hasn't gotten oscar attention and that kind of thing yeah but yeah i just i just love the themes uh even though it's kind of a it's pretty, probably all done on synthesizers sure. <laughs> um you know it's kind of this drum heavy uh score but i just i just think they're great themes yeah that's great that's great yeah that's one i'll have to watch and listen to um because i haven't seen that one yet so good pick my number eight is one of my favorite films of all time one of my favorite film scores of all time it is superman 1978 mm by the great john williams uh this is yeah. the first time he's appearing on the list but not the last yeah. he's just one of the best you know and and this one was nominated yeah. for best original score it's just so heroic and uh iconic i just get a big smile on my face every time i hear this one uh, because i i see the movie in my head it's you know like i said so iconic and there have been so many comic book movies that have come out since then this is the, the first one and yeah. I feel like they're all trying to get that kind of a theme, right? They want all their, every hero wants to have that kind of a iconic musical theme that, that they can play and, and you can instantly recognize. So uh, it's the first one to do it. Uh, it's, in my opinion, the best one to do it. Uh, this is the one by which all others are compared, I feel like. A crazy thing about this score, and, and I remember even when I was young hearing this, it's like the music says the word Superman when it comes on screen. Uh, you see the logo <laughs> pop in and it's that dun da da, you know, and you just hear it. Uh, it's like it's talking to you. It's so weird. I, I still hear nice. every time I listen to it, yeah. it seems like that's great. Through the music, he's somehow saying the word Superman. It's bizarre. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've never had that experience before. And so, you know, but it, it's not just the main theme that's great. Each character kind of has their own little theme. Mm -hmm. um lois has hers uh lex luthor and uh his uh henchman otis has his own mm -hmm. uh, funny little kind of uh theme in yeah. it with a with a yeah. played with a tuba uh it's it's really cool and, and he's able to kind of mix in you know the kind of big grand heroic theme with these kind of smaller mm -hmm. um more sinister ones or funnier ones or more romantic ones as well uh he just did an incredible job there's all these you know, recurring motifs throughout it. And each of them are just really, really good um, and memorable. And favorite tracks on this, obviously Superman March, the, the theme. Uh, another good one is when he goes to create the Fortress of Solitude, it's called Kryptonian Crystal. And it's a really, really good um, sort of otherworldly feel, very sci-fi, you know, that he has for, for Krypton. And then mm. Can You Read My Mind, which is the, the lowest uh, kind of love theme of the mm. film which i think is really really good um this is one that that i can listen to all the time so yeah superman that's my number eight all right what is your number seven my number seven is by a composer that you're gonna laugh but i prefer to call him ennio morricone oh, okay yeah i've heard it pronounced many different ways okay. so i don't know you... what their correct one is um yours is probably more accurate but okay. again it's not like me and my buddies all sit around talking about composers <laughs> and they're like you know you're saying ennio's name wrong or something <laughs> right. like this just so i've always just thought of him as ennio morricone that's fine uh, <laughs> fine with me i don't again i don't know how it is pronounced so <laughs> yeah all right so in the early 90s um these are not the westerns that that he he was so famous for but in the early yeah. 90s he did a couple fantastic scores uh one of them is wolf oh, um yeah that's a great one uh yeah. yes almost made my list um the yeah. other one i decided to go to is bugsy uh oh see i haven't seen that i really want to see that movie oh you haven't yeah and, and for people that don't know this is the guy that invented vegas he's the gangster that it's it's a a, a great drama and i think okay. it won an academy award for best picture actually okay um and I, you know the 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 score itself is once again very emotional mm -hmm. and i'll tell you if if you if you were looking you're probably not but if you were looking for a score that is trying to make love to you. <laughs> I, when I was thinking about how to describe this thing, I'm like, it's just like Enyo is just like, right. you know, 
you know, wants to, wants to make love to the audience. It's, <laughs> right. it's the only, only way I can describe it. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, it, it's just the tracks have so much passion. Yeah. And uh, they're, they're pretty deliberate, the tracks mm-hmm. are, but yeah. there's multiple themes and they, they just all pin you down and really, they just feel like they really get to your soul. Mm, uh, at yeah. the same time, they make you feel pretty unsettled, kind of right. like he did with Wolf, um, sure. although this doesn't sound like Wolf. Um, I mean, you know, the character has chosen this sort of uh, edgy, dangerous path, and yeah. the film definitely echoes that. Like, there, okay. there's sort of a real element of danger that yeah. is sort of the undercurrent in this. Mm-hmm. But the 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 music that is presented in these sort of ballads are just just dripping with honey, and mm-hmm. it's just uh, wonderful. That's great. Well, my number seven is another one of my favorite movies of all time. It is Ben Hur. 1959 uh, a guy named Miklos Rosa uh, composed the score for this and he just did a phenomenal job this is quintessential epic orchestral score Mm -hmm. Uh, it was uh, best score at the Oscars the year it was released and it was also the longest score in cinematic history until just last year when Zack Snyder's Justice League was released and uh, Junkie XL did his four hour score. This is a three hour score. Ah. Um, it oh, is... Plus the movie, doesn't it? The movie starts out with score and then there's an intermission, isn't there? Correct. There's an overture, yeah. there's an intermission yeah. and there's exit music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all of that uh, adds up right, to right. a lot of screen time. So, mm-hmm. um, but all of them are, are just great. Every single song in this, it's so well done. Um, there's the theme, but there's also, uh, you know, there, there's this kind of epic triumphant score uh, and, and, and music in it. But there's mm-hmm. also this very kind of um, intimate, uh, intimate moments uh, in the music when, you know, uh, it's just kind of two characters talking uh, mm-hmm. where he gets makes it go, get really small. And uh, it's just, you know, some piano or something or a violin And um, it it has this, you know, this kind of, again, triumphant, victorious nature to it, but also has a lot of tragedy. Um, This is kind of a tragic story. And um, the music definitely reflects that. And he just did an excellent job all throughout it. Very, very long movie. A lot of music in there. Um, It's only cut out, you know, a few times. And one time uh, is during the, the big chariot race. Um, there's no music through that and I think that's actually a really good choice right and uh, but yeah it, it's one that just again highlights more the emotion that the characters mm-hmm. are going through and, and and kind of the setting more than the action or things mm-hmm. like that so yeah some some tracks to listen to here of course the overture that's kind of the main theme and then there's a track called friendship there's another one called the galley uh, during the big boat battle mm-hmm. that's a really good score very uh, kind of rhythmic and um, another one called Panem et Circinus, which is Bread and Circuses. And uh, that's another good track on it. So if you want to listen to those. Yeah, I remember the score. And yeah. I remember thinking that I was surprised how good it was. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I, I can't say there's a lot of older scores that I would go back to that really I cared a whole lot about. But I, sure. I sat and listened to the overture. And there's a lot of, I like it when a, a piece of music takes you on different avenues that you may not be expecting yes, and introduces. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah, just different uh, angles to it that make it more interesting, you know. Right, right. And I, I yeah. definitely picked up on that even on the first viewing. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. All right, that's my number seven. What is your number six? My number six is Hoosiers by Jerry Goldsmith, oh, uh, 1985. Good one. This is another one that is all on synthesizer. Um, yeah. You can tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not going to be a score that um, I couldn't say to you, hey, listen to this. It's so amazing. You know, <laughs> there's so much emotion in it. I mean, that exists, but the thing sure. is I fell in love with this score uh, back in the eighties. Mm. And I think the themes are tremendous. I, it, he probably didn't have the budget to do it with an orchestra. Right. Um, so I'm not trying to discount it. I mean, it's the number six on my <laughs> list of all time. Yeah. It's just that that's not the most ideal way to present, um, you know, with, with, you know, digital instruments that are on a keyboard instead yeah. of, you know, actual orchestras, at least right. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, not an actual orchestra, but right. I mean, it, 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 it just depicts, um, everything the film has, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, a basketball film. I don't yeah. Know, it's a, it's a good movie. Movies. I really like it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. And it's got, uh, it depicts the, I mean, you hear 
in the, the music, the, the, the action moments, the, the love, the suspense, the nostalgia, which, you know, the very big is sort of on nostalgia. Right. And I've just loved it since the eighties. And so it just has a really special place uh, for me, but again, it'd probably be done differently these days, but that, that score definitely has its fans. There are some people yeah. that if you, um, it, unlike a lot of movies, if you mention Hoosiers, some people will mention the music because sure. there are some really, really great themes in it. Yeah. Yeah. I do actually remember that it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, but I really like it. I've only seen it once, but yeah, that is, mm -hmm. that is the music did stand out. I remember when I watched it. Um, so yeah, good pick. All right. We're on to my number six, which is planet of the apes from 1968. Oh. The original Planet of the Apes, also by Jerry Goldsmith, uh, one of oh, the great okay. composers. Um, mm -hmm. He uh, was nominated for Best Original Score on this one. This one, oh. I would say, is his most experimental, maybe one of the most experimental oh. uh, film scores of all time. It's very um, oh. percussive. Uh, mm -hmm. He used a lot of strange instruments, instruments I haven't even heard of <laughs> as I was I looking like through that. The yeah. list. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And uh, kind of primal sounds he's getting out of these instruments uh, that really fit mm -hmm. the story and the world uh, that this story takes place in. Um, it, it's very exciting. It's it's kind of um, unsettling, you know, um, because you have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these astronauts landing on this planet. They don't know where they are. And it, oh, it's I kind of seen it. You haven't seen the original? Okay, yeah, you got to watch it uh, because it's, you know, astronauts land on this planet, don't know where they are. They're very confused. Um, mm -hmm. They don't know what's going on. And then, you know, all these apes come out of nowhere uh, and, you mm -hmm. know, walking, talking apes, riding on horseback, and they're kind of freaked out. So the, the score very much reflects the kind of madness that they're trapped in uh -huh. um, as they're stranded on this planet. So it's very, very well done. It's very, like I said, exciting. Uh, it, it has a sense of tragedy to it. Um, mm -hmm. Just very inter interesting instrumentation here uh, that he's experimenting with that nice. totally paid off. Uh, it's mm -hmm. very, very well done. And even the way he's using traditional instruments is not is not the traditional way you would use them. The strings and things are doing very interesting things. Uh, love it. Yeah, I haven't love heard it. before. So mm -hmm. yeah. This is one, if you haven't seen, you got to put it at the top of your watch list. Yeah, you check it out. yeah. Yeah, it's a good one. If you just wanted to sample some tracks, um, The Hunt is really good. That's early in the film. Uh, there's another track called No Escape. And uh, might be my favorite track is called The Intruders. So those are some that you can, uh, you can go listen to now. All right, on to your number five. My number five is a film that you don't love. Um, <laughs> and I do. Uh, but we're talking about the music. Uh, that would be Mission Impossible 2, Hans Zimmer. Oh, okay. So I've got to mention up top, I have this on CD. So I completely okay. agree with you. The music ah, okay. is phenomenal. Okay. I'm not going to have to do a lot of convincing is what you're saying. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, this is definitely my most diverse pick. Um, uh, you know, you got um, tracks in this that are uh, Hans's sort of typical um, orchestral melodies um, sort of bolstered by his, you know, he's got his Russian choir in his back pocket all the time that he's right, like, sure. Oh, look, got this choir back here. That's going <laughs> to echo everything, which makes it sound epic. You know, yeah, it does. Uh, there's even some electric guitar in, in some of the mm -hmm. numbers. Yep. Um, and then you've got these, um, these uh, epic sort of choral numbers, um, mm. which must have like, giant choirs, uh, right. you know, so there's, there's numbers like that. And then you've got uh, Lisa Gerard uh, comes in on just some just stupid, great tracks. Uh, one of them's called Injection. Yep. Uh, it's just a great track. Um, and then I'll mention a couple other tracks. Um, Seville and a track called Naya yep. um, give us this flamenco sound, yep. uh, which uh, just has a just a great melody. And they're just, you know, the, these are ones that I've, you know, I, I have the CD too, and I've yeah. listened to it so many times, like yeah. in the car or whatever. And it's yeah. just, it's just really um, kind of in all, all different types of arenas. And it's just yeah. all very enjoyable. Sure. Um, and uh, uh, so I've listened to it many times independently. Oh, Naya and, Eth Naya and Ethan is another one uh, that I wanted to mention too. But yeah, yeah. there's just some really, really great uh, uh, tracks that, that 
you know, some scores are all down the same path, right? Yeah. Whereas this one kind of, oh, check this out. Oh, and right. I think I had this. Yeah. It's right. Kind of, yeah. It's a lot uh, of different very, flavors very, in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm going to grab it. It's literally sitting right here. Um, <laughs> It's, it's one that I I pulled out so I could uh, show you. Yeah, nice. MI2 the 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 CD I've listened to. I mean, since this movie came out in in two thousand, mm-hmm. um, I would have been only what eight or nine. And so mm-hmm. yeah, we actually <laughs> me and my cousins made a uh, our own Mission Impossible movie at home when we were young, and we put you this, put this on the channel at some point. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where the footage is. If I oh, if no. I had the footage, oh, no. I would put it out, yeah. but. Yeah. um it's uh yeah it's one we we would put on the boom box you know and crank uh-huh. it up as background music while we were doing our thing so sure yeah it's one i've listened to numerous times too and it's it's excellent now this is interesting because inevitably or probably most certainly you like the music more than the movie right sure and it and it's not a movie i hate uh it's just okay. happens to be my least favorite mission impossible movie um okay. I, I think it just fair gets enough. fair enough it gets okay. a little ridiculous at times some some of the stuff it's a little over is, the top at times yeah. it's a little over the top um yeah but it's it's not a movie i totally dislike uh there's definitely a lot of things i do enjoy about it okay we'll we'll talk about it more when we do our mission podcast <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> moving on to my number 5 uh it's a movie uh that i just think is excellent it is mad max fury road mm. this is the 2015 george miller film the mm-hmm. soundtrack is by uh junkie xl uh that's his dj mm-hmm. name he's used yeah. to be a dj um his real name is tom holkenborg mm-hmm. and he's just absolutely uh, a madman i mean he's so uh experimental uh with Mm -hmm. his scores uh he's done so many great ones collaborated with Hans zimmer on several this movie i I was shocked to learn it was nominated for 10 oscars but no nomination for the score i was shocked when i can't depend on the academy you really can't it's unfortunate but you can't uh but yeah this is just so exciting it's so wild and crazy uh and it fits you know mad max it's in the title right um Mm -hmm. and it's so well done it's sort of like a rock opera i mean it's really intense and a lot of drums a lot of guitars Mm -hmm. there's a character in this movie who is playing the guitar on this big rig yeah Uh, yeah he's he's called the doof warrior and uh he he is is an interesting (laughs) character and yeah yeah, so there's all these characters playing these drums on these big cars Uh as they're chasing (laughs) um down furiosa and and max in this movie uh the the whole movie is basically a big car chase it's just so so much fun to listen to um on its own uh but it it fits the story so well of these characters and there are moments where it does get quiet and it gets very introspective and um Mm -hmm. you know we we get to kind of um get into the characters a little bit with with the music um but it's kind of that interesting um you know the the visuals of it that kind of classic idea of of the band marching with the the army you know they used to have drummers as they would march you know and uh, go into battle um and i was looking a little bit into that and and why did we have drummers marching with these armies it doesn't really make sense but it was it was something that they did to of course stay united um sure. and and as they were as they were marching stay on on beat uh there was also an intimidation factor to it oh yeah um, sure yeah and and so you know it also helped raise morale so there were all these reasons that good reasons i guess but you know uh it's it's odd the way we think of of war today um to do something yeah. like that but it's cool right. that the way they incorporate it in um in mad max fury road uh, it, it kind of has that mm-hmm. just very, uh, very cool feel to it. So yeah, this is just one that I can listen to anytime. It just uh, is one that gets my blood pumping. Yeah. And I, I, that was one of my favorite films of the year it came out. Yeah. Um, and I'll have to, I've seen it a couple of times, but I'll need mm-hmm. to pay more ch- attention to the score for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. All right. That's my number five. What is your number four? My number four is another one by Hans Zimmer. Uh, <laughs> Um, still might not be the last time we hear from him. Uh, <laughs> right. This one is King Arthur, uh, the 2004 oh, film. I like that movie. Yeah. And and we're getting this. I mean, these as as I'm sure you're feeling too. some of these like top four or five are just so, so amazing. You know, yes. you can pop in the CD anytime. Absolutely. And this is one of those. Now, 
there's there's a, I don't want to say a bit of a cheat, but there is one song um, on this score where um, there's a song that is sung with actual words, but the rest of it mm. is score. Okay, um, it's sort of like the main theme, but they actually put words to it. Oh, interesting. Uh, which is another thing that they like they did with Titanic, right, um, right, and and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, um, King Arthur. It's just one of those that Hans was given license from start to finish to just you know sort of go off and create sort of this his own not his own thing because it does match what's on the screen sure. you know definitely it follows that but yeah he was just allowed to make a lot of melodies mm. and just you know bring everything to the equation which he's allowed to do sometimes uh to great effect it's it's yeah. a very majestic score which makes sense mm -hmm. um there's some just bombastic action pieces that um that sound terrific and then there's you know there's quiet ballads as well so there, yeah. again just and they're not the same piece you know over and over these are all just different um tunes that are they're spun off on their own you know so sure. uh it features moya brennan is her name i don't really know her but uh she she does the sort of the the voice the the uh another one of these where the voice is kind of a character in in the score and yeah. it's just um you know sort of blended throughout um in the different variations and uh you know it's a full orchestra you know the horns the strings the the percussion i mean you got everything in it Hans right. has his patented Russian choir, you know, <laughs> providing a lot of service here. Sure. And it, it's just one of his uh, best scores for overall start to finish, just great themes. Yeah. There's really, there's one point where the drums play sort of incessantly for about 20 seconds to build to something. Mm. That's about the only part where someone might say, you know, what kind of song is this? If they walked in the room <laughs> yeah. while you're listening to it, well, right. the entire rest of the score is just this beautiful uh, symphony. Wow. Uh, couple tracks i'll call out one is called um it's kind of a funny title uh you know the saxon are a people and sure. the track is called do you think i'm saxon which <laughs> I'll play in the rod stewart uh song. right uh, it's kind of funny probably hans's sure. idea yeah and then um and then there's a track called hold the ice and from the three minute to three minute 30 second mark it's just just splendid i mean wow it's just yeah it's just so amazing that's great. That's great. Yeah. yeah, that's one I'll have to rewatch. It's a it's a movie I really enjoy. And uh, but it's been a while since I've seen it. So yeah, I'll definitely uh, rewatch that so I can I can hear his music there. Or even Good just pick. put the put I'm, with some of these you're mentioning. I'm just yeah. Gonna, if nothing else, just pull it up on YouTube sure. and, and find the score and listen to yep. that, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Very good. All right. Um, on to my number four, which is Star Wars. The Empire Strikes Back. Mm. Um, this was a hard choice because all the Star Wars movies have <laughs> great music, obviously. I, I don't think the, the sequels get nearly enough love uh, in general, but um, also for the score. I think uh, Williams does some of his best work there. But I picked Empire because this has your classic big Star Wars theme, as mm -hmm. well as introducing the imperial march which is you know darth vader's theme mm -hmm. uh iconic music there oh it's the first time you hear it yeah yeah you don't hear it really? in, in a okay. new hope yeah okay. yeah it's not Makes he sense then sure yeah he didn't write it until the sequel so yeah that one of course yoda's theme yoda's introduced in episode five and so we get to hear his music there first and a lot of good stuff uh one of my favorite tracks is han solo and the princess their kind of love theme um, the more romantic uh, theme that he wrote for them. Um, so yeah, each character kind of gets their own theme here, um, which is what I think is genius about Williams and, and the Star Wars themes particularly is that he really does hone in on each character and give them kind of their own uh, little mm -hmm. theme. He's actually gone back now. Uh, now that uh, the new Han Solo movie came out, he gave Han his own specific theme. He didn't get to do that in the other movies. And he's done the same thing for Obi-Wan Kenobi in the new series on okay. Disney Plus, uh, he wrote uh, an original uh, theme for Obi Wan, so uh, you can hear those there. But yeah, it's just—I mean, it's Star Wars. It's super iconic. It's everyone knows as soon as you hear those first few notes what it is. Um, and he just does a great job at the the big stuff, big space battles and stuff, as well as you know the small character moments. Um, and it all really uh, just enhances the film so much. I mean, it's. Uh, I, I remember hearing about um, early cuts of the first Star Wars movie without the score 
and people just kind of scratching their heads at it. I don't really get this. What is it? You know, and then <laughs> you put the music in and it really is one of those things that makes Star Wars as great as it is. Uh, yeah. It elevates yeah. everything about those movies um, are just so, so, so uh, elevated by his, his music. He's great at creating a sense of wonder uh, in, in all of his scores, particularly, I think, in Star Wars. I think that kind of awe that you feel at the, the, the big landscapes or whatever happens to be going on in, in these films, he, he really does a good job at, at making us feel that um, in the excitement and the, the tragedy or um, the romance, whatever it may be. There's, I was really close to picking Return of the Jedi because there is a moment that always stands out and, and highlights the emotion so well. It's Darth Vader's death um, mm-hmm. as Luke is cradling him in his arms. There's this mm-hmm. little, uh, very sad uh, couple notes on a piano that's just played and it just really, really um, hits me. It, it impacts me big time every time I listen to that one. So yeah, all the Star Wars themes, I, I singled out Empire, but I could lean Jedi as well um, there. So um, yeah, that's my number four. Yeah, that, that's a good choice. I mean, um, yeah, just another iconic one from John Williams. Just right. add it to the list. I know. We yeah. could do a whole John Williams podcast. I mean, yeah. he, he's created yeah. so many iconic ones that yeah. uh, I tried to limit it as much as I could, but I had to yeah. include yeah. A, a few of a few of his on here. You didn't want to um, have like all three Star Wars films back to <laughs> yeah. back, even though they all sure. have good me. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. did that to some extent as well. Right, right, right. So yeah, what is your, uh, we're on to number three now. So what's your number three? Yeah, and that's actually a good segue for my next one because mm. my next one is actually Matrix Reloaded by Don oh. Davis. Oh, interesting. Um, and uh, this is a, this is one where I had um, the first one and the second one on my list, and I had okay. to choose because I thought, uh, well, first of all, there's some of the same music that's repeated in Matrix sure. Two. Right. You know, in, Ma- in Matrix One, um, it, it, it's just um, it's it's a very unique score again, but. Um, Don Davis had this way of of using horns where mm. um, there would be a horn um, note played and then it was like a question and then another note was played in a completely different didn't mirror it it was like um, up two or three notes you know what right I mean? it was, it was right counter to it but it just kept everything kind of skewed and kept you sort of on edge and yeah. it would, you know do question and then answer but right. just kind of all over the place and it was just so interesting to me that is and cool. uh yeah. And then Matrix 2 um, uh, you know, brought in uh, the drums, you know, brought in mm. the electronic sound um, with this uh, group called Juno Reactor. Mm. And to me, uh, the Matrix Reloaded is the best blend of orchestra and electronic music ever that I've heard. Oh, wow. OK. Um, yeah. Because you've got you've got similar music from Matrix 1, but then you've got in the big action set pieces, you've got orchestral music and then layered on top of that are, are these um just um overwhelmingly uh in your face sort of electronic uh pieces uh yeah. like, like i don't know if you remember the freeway scene you know and, sure. and then the, the scene where um neo fights like 100 agents or whatever yeah yeah um, i think those are well and then there's the scene in the in the chateau which is called chateau on, on the mm. cd um mm-hmm. burly brawl is the name of the one where he fights the 100 agents okay and they're just um uh, again these are not just electronic pieces the orchestra yeah. is also in the piece you know what sure. i mean so it's it's the the merging of these two and i've just never heard a better presentation of 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 that kind of music yeah and yeah, uh, it's, cool. it's to this day that i've got a couple of the tracks on a running playlist that i, mm, that I use yeah. or like a workout playlist yeah um and and yet uh yeah it's just it's another one that's that's varied in its approach um but it's just the the infusion of the electronic music which i'm i'm kind of a big fan of electronic music sure and uh this is uh this is perfection it's it's masterful i think and it, yeah. this is probably the most fun score on my list mm. um you know for for all of those reasons right yeah that's a good pick that's another one i had on the blu-ray it does have an isolated score i didn't get to listen to it unfortunately i didn't have time um but yeah i want to now i want to even more um watch listen to both yeah, of the- those Right. The the Matrix One has an isolated score track mm. as well, and it has a commentary. So it's like oh. um, um, the Don Davis himself. Um, oh, cool. He, he lets the music play, and then at certain points, he'll chime in and say a few oh, things. Interesting. And then he lets the music play. Yeah, so that was a bit different, too. A lot of the isolated yeah. scores, obviously, or if not all of the other ones that we that you and I probably heard, yeah. don't usually have a commentary on it as well. No, 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 none of the yeah. ones I have do. So yeah, that's interesting. I'll, I'll go back and look at that. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, good pick. I like it. So we're on to my number three. 
which is Blade Runner from 1982 by Vangelis, uh, who is, you know, incredible uh, Greek uh, musician, uh, just passed away this year at age 79. Uh, he passed away back in May. I saw um, that. Yeah. 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 This is, uh, to me, the most transportive score, I think, of all of them. It just takes me to another mm. time and place. Uh, it's, it's pretty much all synth. I mean, it's all synthesizers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, so it's, it's, I mean, that's not always bad. It's but... not, it, it, it works so <laughs> well 80s. here. It's, it was the eighties, right? <laughs> right. Exactly. And he was just a master of it. Yeah. I mean, this guy is absolutely incredible. He's a genius. It, it really, um, fits the film. It's, it's got that kind of, you know, it, it, it's all electronic and digital. So it's very futuristic sounding. While also being, you know, Blade Runner is, it's set in the future, but it's really this old, like, uh, noir film. Um, so it has mm -hmm. that kind of vibe to it, um, while also being okay. all on a synthesizer. It's it's very, very different, very unique. Um, it's dark, hmm. it's moody, and, you know, has that kind of dreamlike quality to it. And, and so, yeah, it's just, it's just great. It's kind of got that like a jazzy vibe uh at times um but a, a kind of quiet smooth jazzy vibe but it also has these interesting middle eastern uh influences mm. in it uh that that sets it apart even okay. more and um yeah. at yeah. times even asian influence where the the world of of los angeles uh that blade runner takes place in uh, has a lot of asian influences in it um just the architecture okay. and um the, the different aspects of of that kind of culture of you know the the ridley scott's version of future la kind of was a very east yeah. meets west amalgamation okay. kind of so uh yeah it's just excellent it's it's excellent again it, it, it evokes the movie instantly in my head as soon as i hear it mm -hmm. i am instantly seeing those images play and uh mm -hmm. so well done if you wanted to get a little sample listen to love theme which is my favorite in the movie and tears in rain um which is towards the the climax of the film uh really really well done uh, evangelis uh is is excellent he's he's so so good at uh it's pretty simple it's not anything too complex from from you know the way it sounds um but what he's doing is actually quite intricate so wow. yeah yeah blade runner it, it's Top three film scores for me. Very, very, very well done. Now we're on to number two. What is your number two film score? My number two film score is by a com composer that you probably have heard of named Hans Zimmer. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I've I'm heard of him. Sorry. I, I guess I, I should apologize. There's so many, but if, if it is what it is, right? If, if you know, and, and anyway, um, yeah. this one happens to be uh, Gladiator. Oh, good one. Good pick. Yeah, I considered that actually it's, mm, it's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah, and and um and I'm sure you know Lisa Gerard, um the, mm -hmm. the the singer that he employs. I think this was sort of the first big one that she did. Yeah. Um and and, and obviously Hans Zimmer used her once or twice um after that, but right. I mean she just um she just sort of emotes uh, these notes just mm -hmm. with absolute desperation and yeah um and and devastation almost yeah. at times, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and it's got kind of an ethnic, uh, sound, uh, quality in different tracks on this, in this, uh, score as well. Sure. Um, and, and, but, but her vocals are sort of the showcase. Um, you know, she actually sings words or it sounds like words, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a different language, mm -hmm. but sometimes I hear it and I wonder, is she even singing a different language or is she just letting something come out based on yeah. this heavy, heavy songs or whatever you want to call right. it that she's expected to yeah uh, to sing um and so um it, it, it's hard to break gladiator down so i won't um <laughs> just there's a dozen or more beautiful themes um yeah. i i've listened to this one so many times separately from mm -hmm. the film and mm -hmm. this one's not very light <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like most right. of mine i guess <laughs> uh it's it's it, it's uh even listening to the music i mean you can tell there's some some dark stuff going yeah. on you know yeah um but it's just it's just tremendous and mm -hmm. um i guess my favorite moment there's a track called patricide um which cues a certain moment that happens in the film mm -hmm. um and then about halfway through the track at two minutes and 48 seconds is when it really like just really kicks in 
Uh, so that's probably my favorite moment. But there, I mean, like I said, a dozen or more tracks that are just yeah. all different themes and just all just just masterful. Yeah, excellent. Very well done. Film score, uh, very uh, emotional, instantly mm -hmm. connects you with the film and the characters and what they're going through. And yeah, yeah. great pick. All right, my number two is Man of Steel by the great mm -hmm. Hans Zimmer. This is his best work, in my opinion. I think this is so, so inspiring. Honestly, what he does here, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a hopeful, powerful score, um, which is what the movie is all about. Um, and that's, that's yeah. the fact that I have two Superman scores says a lot about <laughs> me. <laughs> hey. I'm a huge, huge fan of the character yeah. and the fact that he's gotten two great all-time great movies with two all-time great film scores is mm -hmm. so rare yeah, um, yeah. you know so uh he just does a great job staying away from what john williams did he doesn't yeah, try to right, replicate right. that there's no reason to <laughs> um right. you went totally different direction with it and uh it's much uh you know it has those big moments but it's a much smaller um feeling uh you know more intimate kind of character centric score and, and story um, that they were telling. Um, it's, it's also a sci-fi film, you know, it's, it's a very much, they lean into that kind of idea of a first contact story mm -hmm. um, where humanity is coming into contact with aliens for the first time. And uh, right. so he's got a lot of cool, very interesting um, electronic digital elements uh, mixed in with the traditional film score that, that is just really, really well done. He did something that I've never seen any composer do in the insert in this. Uh, this is a, a metal um, CD. It's the special edition deluxe yep. version. Uh, you can see the image here. It's a um, drum circle uh, he created. Oh. Uh, it's, it's uh, cool. I think, nine drum sets all set up wow. uh, together awesome. in this, in this uh, recording studio. And he had all these drummers record together. And so you get this incredible, you know, percussion section that's just doing this crazy wow. drum stuff uh, that's throughout the entire score. Yeah, and yeah. It, it's just so, so well done. His very quiet kind of piano stuff works really, really well. So, yeah, he, he's getting experimental here again, uh, you know, not with just with the drums, but with. Um, the digital electronic stuff and, and the traditional score. So I just think it's an all timer. I've listened to this in my car so many times, uh, more times than I can count. And uh, it's another one of those you can hum though. It, it has that kind of essential theme to it that does play throughout, but also these other different kind of motifs and riffs that you're hearing all throughout the, the film. So definitely check it out. If you haven't a couple of tracks, I will find him. Uh, sent here for a reason and flight uh, which is my favorite of of all the tracks on the score so well done man of steel just a great great film one of my favorites and the the score uh lives up uh to the story and the movie um very very well done great collaboration between Zack snyder and hans zimmer they've collaborated a number of times since then and hopefully will again in the future um so yeah man of steel that's my number two yeah great film great score um mm -hmm. the nine drum sets goodness yeah. uh <laughs> why stop at nine i, I imagine right. how good it would be if there were 10, 10 if only right. he would have just gone to 10 <laughs> or yeah. 11 you know always right. dial it up to 11 <laughs> exactly. um yeah you know if i could just mention something real quick sure. um that is more um the continuation of that music obviously mm -hmm. is in batman versus superman except yeah. there's a lot of new stuff in there, there is. and i don't know that we're going to talk about it again so i just wanted to mention that for some reason one of the um tracks and i'll, I'll link it to the to the podcast okay on YouTube, um uh, when we when it's posted sure uh, when it's uploaded but yeah there's a track that he has on there um and maybe it's repeated a couple times in the score but he actually um hans uses some of the music that he used and batman begins but he kind of he kind of expounds on it a little bit and oh. and and i i love that track from batman i can't remember the name of it you know yeah but yeah. Uh, but i'll find it and okay. I'll, I'll link both of them yeah but um he takes one of the themes from from that series. i mean it's definitely it's unmistakably from that yeah. movie 
Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. He, but he he kind of reuses it, uses a little bit of different uh, in, instrumentation, and then he kind of expounds on it. It's wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. But I, I don't I don't know why he um borrowed it right from that, but I'm glad he did because it's yeah. It's, a great theme and i'll yeah i'll find it and, and that's it. cool that's cool yeah batman v superman was when i considered um because mm-hmm. yeah you do have the batman stuff you have the man of steel stuff too but it's mm-hmm. just not mm-hmm. as much gotcha um, yeah and i do yeah. i have both of them on cd so mm-hmm. I, I adore both of them and and you also get yeah. wonder woman in there too but right um, right yeah i've just yeah. I've, I've listened to man of steel more i think it uh-huh. flows better as listening to it together gotcha. um that's mm-hmm. another reason i i put it on the list and not bvs but yeah both are both are excellent yeah all right well we're on to our number ones our final entries in our top film scores what is your number one bert well my number one uh won't be a shock to fans that closely follow the podcast but my number one is by hans zimmer again (laughs) it's interstellar oh great yeah um yeah, someone might ask, why did I um, leave Inception off the list? I didn't right. need yet another really dark uh, score. I already had eight of them sure, you know, right. on here. So I, but I went, <laughs> but yeah, but you know, number one is Interstellar. I've, I've already talked about it a fair bit. It's a great sci-fi score. Um, mm. It's it's really hard to put into words um, how how I feel when I watch this. Um, mm. The entire thing is listenable from start to finish. Um, it is very melancholic. Um, yeah. I just feel really uh, transported far away, um, just like right. they are in the film. So mm-hmm. effect is, you know, the effect is accomplished. Yeah. Um, there, there's atmospheric tracks, melodic tracks, there's mm-hmm. action tracks. It's got all of that. I, I just feel like the this music, um, I do tune out the film when I listen to this independently sometimes. Yeah. And I just sort of let it take me away. Uh, it kind of takes me to a place where uh, it's like my happy place. <laughs> like yeah. I'm really at peace, especially right. there's, there's some dreamy tracks. Um, and uh, there's also um, some overlapping themes uh, where Hans gets going with a certain theme. And then he brings in something that um, is, is not, would, would not typically be introduced with that piece of music. And is sometimes even in a competing time signature, oh, which is so amazing to me. Yeah. 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 Hmm. And then he does some things with tracks where, um, it'll be sort of a really quiet track, but it has some horror tones. Sure. Uh, it's so uh, mellow that yeah. it doesn't, it's not like a coming at you horror. Right. It's just, it just, again, it makes you um, disturbed a little bit, but it's sure. still very beautiful to listen to. Yeah. If that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah, um, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some of the, the major themes are um, protracted and, and sort of slowed down or sped mm. up depending on where they're at in the film uh, because right. time is a big part of it, you know, and yes. that kind of thing. So it sort of emphasizes those time differentials. Anyway, mm-hmm. I, I could go on and on about it, but yeah. um, my my favorite moments on it are um, there's a track called Mountains and oh. No Time for Caution. And that's just, those are the tracks where the orchestra really comes in strong yeah. and really lays it on. And you got everything bouncing off the walls. It's just, right. yeah. I mean, I can't say enough about this, um, yeah. but it's very personal to me too. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just love every minute of it. If they threw away the film, I'd say, well, at least I have the score. <laughs> sure, that's sure. That's great. Yeah, that's excellent. It, it's so good. It's so well done. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about it on our uh, uh, top five films podcast. That was your mm-hmm. your number one favorite film. And uh, mm-hmm. I did listen to an interview with Hans uh, where he kind of broke down his entire career. Uh, you can watch it on YouTube. I think Vanity Fair I did I may it. have seen it. Yeah. 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 It's really well, well done. And uh, he talks about this, how, you know, he had worked with Nolan so many times at this point that they had kind of run out of ideas. And so uh, Nolan, I think was the one that suggested uh, the organ. And uh, Hans was yeah. like, well, everyone's going to think it's a horror movie. If you're doing that old organ thing, that's what they did on the old Dracula movies and all that and uh he's like right. i think you can do something with it uh and he did he he made a, a totally unique sounding score um, with this very ancient instrument um you know he talked about how the organ was at one time like the most complex machine on planet earth uh all these buttons and knobs and foot pedals yeah. and all these things that you can do with an organ right. and uh right. he really knocked it out of the park with that score it is excellent like, like you said it does have those haunting um you know kind of horror elements at times but yeah it can get um 
very intense and, and also very kind of um, uh, quiet and intimate too. Uh, so yes. yeah, very well done. Great, great pick for your number one. Funnily enough, I picked my favorite film as my favorite film score as well. Raiders <laughs> of the Lost Ark. Gotcha. Is gotcha. My number one from 1981. Yeah, it's just it's so connected for me mm-hmm. with those images. And I'm yeah, just instantly yeah. taken back to the film. My, my film scores have been a lot more uh, kind of fun. Yeah, I more, like the, more fun than mine. That's I like sure. the I li- yeah, I like the kind of more light kind of hopeful. Sure. Yeah, there's nothing um, wrong with that. Elements. And so yeah, it's another John Williams. I mean, he's on my list three times because I just think he's the mm-hmm. best. I, I don't think there's anyone who um, quite matches what he's been able to do over his career, creating such instantly recognizable themes um, mm-hmm. for so many hugely popular films. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's just kind of incredible when you think about it. Um, mm-hmm. It's This is, I consider it the ultimate orchestral movie film score i mean it's got everything you could want it does have you know excitement and adventure and action um it does have you know romance um it's got uh a lot of scary moments too where he kind of emphasizes the horror and so it's got it all it's got everything you could want um it again has those character centric themes that play throughout Uh, marion has her own theme of course indy has Mm -hmm. his uh, yeah. you know, the Nazis have their own kind of evil villain, um, score. That's a lot more kind of militaristic feeling, um, snare yeah. drums and that kind of thing. It's, it's interesting. I was reading up on it a little bit and he wanted this one not to be as serious as, you know, stuff he had, you know, just come off of, uh, doing close encounters, uh, with Spielberg. And that was a little bit heavier. Yeah. Um, yeah. and, and so he wanted this one to be, uh, very theatrical, very big and bombastic and um, excessive almost, you know, and, and you know, it really have this kind of sense of fun and adventure that they were going for with the movie, the kind of classic feel, uh, kind of throwback to an earlier age of, of Hollywood. And uh, they, they capture that completely. Um, he also wanted the, the romantic side of things to contrast uh, greatly with the kind of uh, lighter, more humorous side of the film. And I think yeah. he does that specifically with Marion's theme, which I think is, is might be my actual favorite uh, track on, on the entire score. Just to let you know how much I like this music, I actually listen to it every day because it is my alarm on my phone. <laughs> my alarm <laughs> is the Raiders March. Uh, so every to it? Every morning I wake up to uh, nice. the, the Indiana Jones theme on uh, garbage night. Whenever I have to take out the trash, yeah. my yeah. my phone alerts me with anything goes, which is from Temple of Doom. Uh, it's the opening uh, title title track there. And then on Sunday, when I wake up for church, it's the keeper of the grail from Last mm-hmm. Crusade. So. This is on my phone again. I'm listening to this all week long, every week. I don't listen to the full song, obviously. I hit the snooze button usually after a couple notes play, but uh, I do yeah. listen to it every day. Uh, nice. And it's just one that I greatly enjoy. If you want to go listen to a couple tracks, of course, the the Raiders March is, is the best one to listen to. It's the iconic Indiana Jones theme. As I mentioned, Marion's theme. And there's another great one uh, during a big action sequence towards the end of the film is called the Desert Chase. And you can listen to all those okay. uh, to check those out. Um, some good music. So Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's my number one. That's yeah. Good pick. A good movie. Good score. Yeah. Um, iconic. And, mm-hmm. and I just think it just goes to show, you know, both are number one uh, scores or our number one films, but that's part of the reason why they, they, they you know, exactly. like you were saying they, they play off each other and yep. without the music, you know, if it was just a, a, uh, a score that just was sort of in the background we wouldn't we wouldn't have those movies number one on our list yeah. i'm almost sure of it you know no absolutely uh, because, yeah and especially on repeat viewings and all that mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. yeah yep. good, good pick great yeah i wanted to mention some honorable mentions um briefly uh there were so many i mean i, I was going through so many movie scores yeah. listening to just little snippets of each one throughout the week um and so i'll just run them down here up from pixar was okay. extremely close to being on this list i mean really? it was okay 
it was it was it was in the top that 10 for quite a long time you know that michael g yeah yep, yeah yep. michael giacchino yeah, yeah yeah he's the guy that that did yeah. that he does a lot of the pixar scores yes, he does yeah and mm-hmm. he's branched out to doing so many others as well he's he's mm-hmm. one of the greats um x-men first class was up there that's henry mm-hmm. jackman uh, yeah he's got my, some good scores he, yeah, does. he does some really mm-hmm. good ones rocky by the great bill conti uh that's oh, an iconic sure. one yeah uh, yeah, very inspirational <laughs> close encounters i mentioned briefly uh that one is one that where music plays into the story as well mm. um so it's it's a really good one uh the goonies which i thought was williams uh but it's a guy named dave gruesome um who i wasn't really aware of but he's done several good ones and goonies is one that i can just instantly hum uh so that was one i considered of course, Back to the Future is another yeah. iconic one that Sylvester does. Uh, right. Danny Elfman has a couple um, mm-hmm. with both Batman and Spider-Man, mm-hmm. which I think are both excellent. Um, James Horner's score for The Rocketeer, I considered as mm-hmm. well. Um, Pirates of the Caribbean, another Hans Zimmer one um, that he actually yeah, collaborated with one. several composers on that film. Um, and I think he ended up doing the sequel himself, but the first one he collaborated with um klaus several Bedelt. different composers yeah, yeah exactly i think yep. it's uh, some places it, it lists klaus Bedelt as uh the 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 actual composer but i'm yeah. pretty sure i'm he, pretty sure that's hans yeah he's, it, the, he's got his hand on klaus's shoulder right i'll tell you what to do right? <laughs> exactly gotta, right. be, gotta be yeah yeah klaus i think he was ended up being credited but yeah it was it was hans that was working very closely with him yeah. on that one another jacchino one is the incredibles i think is excellent yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. Narnia. I really like the Narnia oh, stuff. Yeah. I considered Carrie, that one too. Yeah. Gregson Williams, uh, he's good. He's a great um, one. The yeah. MCU has so many great ones. I think Iron Man, Thor, Cap, mm-hmm. all have great themes. Um, sure. The Black Panther soundtrack, I think, is really good um, by a, a younger mm-hmm. composer, uh, Ludwig Göransson, um, mm-hmm. who's starting to work with uh, Nolan a lot. Uh, he did oh. Tenant, and he's also doing Hoppenheimer oh, okay. too. Okay. Um, so he's he's really good one to watch. Uh, Zimmer did a great job with Sherlock Holmes. Yeah, uh, I really yeah. like the Sherlock Holmes theme. Yeah, it's, it's very so unique. Good. Yeah, very different. Very different. Fun. That's yep. a fun one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really like Lawrence of Arabia. Has a great mm. score. It's an epic one. Um, a couple of bands that I like. Uh, I've actually got uh, on here in the background Tron Legacy. Daft Punk yeah. did that electronic score. Right. So cool. Yeah. Now that, and that's the one that I almost included. Um, it was mm-hmm. probably, it's probably in my top 20. Um, yeah. and I, like I said, I love electronic music. Yeah. Um, but I just felt like between that one and Matrix, I had to go with yeah. the one that also had kind of the combination of a uh, more orchestral. Right. And I think it is better. Uh, yeah. Than, but I, but I do really like, really, yeah. really like that Tron Legacy score. Yeah. Me too. And one that I got to listen to on the um, isolated score on the Blu-ray was Oblivion, um, the Tom Cruise film. Uh, M83 did the score mm-hmm. on that. And it's another electronic one that has a little bit of orchestral stuff in it mixed in. But watching okay. that last night, I was blown away. I mean, I, I totally yeah. was immersed in the story just yeah. listening to it and watching the film. Uh, uh-huh. absolutely stunning. You have to do it if you I have that on Blu ray. That score, you, you should. Uh, yeah, I do. If you, I do. If you have yeah. the Blu ray, I highly recommend okay. popping it in and yeah. just watching those images. Okay, with the music, it, it's yeah. so so well done. Nice, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. very good. Okay, so those are our top 10 favorite film scores of all time. Now we wanted to talk about our top five favorite composers of all time. And so, Bert, why don't you kick us off? Who is your number five favorite film score composer? My number five is Jerry Goldsmith. Ah, And uh, he's an American composer. Um, He actually died um, quite a while back at age 75 um, in 2004. Mm. You know, this guy has 18 Oscar nominations. Um, They go back to 1963. He has only one win for The Omen. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the guy, he's sort of the Star Trek guy. Right. Um, a lot of people know him for, I mean, he did sure. Gremlins, yeah. Total Recall, mm-hmm. um, some that I really, really enjoy. And these probably would have been on the list, except they were those that had kind of one sort of great theme yeah. I mean, variations on that one great theme. Sure. They're really, really good themes. Yeah. Uh, and those are the Russia house sleeping with the enemy, 
uh, the last castle, the edge, yeah. but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, good stuff. Uh, it, you know, it's a shame that, uh, he, uh, and by the way, his second to last score was a rejected score. He, he never, he oh, never wow. Oh, wow. That stinks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right before yeah. he died. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's a master. He he's, he's absolutely incredible. And, um, yeah, I was looking back at his filmography, you know, I, of course, that's one of my top five, top 10, uh, plan of the apes um great mm -hmm. stuff there uh yeah. chinatown if you mm -hmm. haven't heard chinatown that that's a great no. one uh okay. yeah of course he won for the omen which is incredible um he did alien uh, as well mm -hmm. the original alien film you mentioned yeah. star trek um first blood yeah. uh yeah. gremlins mm -hmm. is one of one mm -hmm. of i think his best um <laughs> he did have you seen the burbs oh the tom hanks movie yeah I saw it once. I didn't really care for it. Oh, really? It okay. Out. It's one of yeah. my all-time favorite comedies ever. I've I watch it every year. Just been the mood I was in. You know, yeah. How comedies are. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Um, but he does such a good job with the music in that because it's really? a horror comedy. So yeah, he, yeah. he very much has this like it starts off extremely uh, tense and and horrific, and then it jumps to this very light kind of melodic thing, you oh. know. And it's really it's really good score. Gotcha. Uh, it's one of the highlights of the movie yeah. for me. Uh, so yeah, that's a great one. Gotcha. Um, I got to watch just two nights ago. LA confidential is one of these that I have with an isolated score oh. and it's Jerry Goldsmith. Yeah. And it's excellent. Yeah. It's okay. so, so well done. So yeah, yeah he, huh. he, he's one of the best, a uh, great, great pick. Um, all right, we'll jump to my number five. Uh, a guy that doesn't get talked about a lot. I feel like uh, was never nominated for any awards. His name is Michael Kamen. Mm. And uh, oh, I know away. who that is. Yeah, yeah he passed yeah. away in 2003. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. at age 55. Uh, very young yeah, when he passed away. He's really, really good at uh, cr crafting mm -hmm. themes, but also being experimental, like we've talked about. He, he really does things that are different. Um, Brazil is a movie I really enjoy by Terry Gilliam, and he did the score for this. And mm -hmm. He incorporates oh, yeah. a typewriter, uh, which is a character is using in the film as the rhythm, rhythm as the percussion instrument in the score. It's amazing. It's so yeah. amazing to watch. Uh, uh -huh. He did Highlander. Um, he did all the Lethal Weapon movies, which have sure. that kind of jazzy feel to them. Um, yeah. He yeah. did uh, the first three Die Hard movies. Um, he got to do a James Bond oh, movie. He did yeah. License to Kill. Um, okay roadhouse uh he did uh, last action hero which i really like that one incorporates a lot of like rock elements to the orchestral mm. um score which i really yeah. enjoy he did event horizon which is a cool sci-fi horror film that i like uh some of his best work he did in the original x-men crafted their theme as well as the iron giant which is one of my favorite films mm. ever made. Uh, he yeah. did so mm. much great. Oh. That, that, that score is so emotional um, and, and it's so well done. Yeah. Maybe my favorite though is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Uh, this is a movie that I don't care for, oh. honestly. <laughs> I don't really like the movie. I think, <laughs> I don't know who decided to cast Kevin Not even Costner. the arrow cam? Yeah, well, the arrow cam's right. fine, actually. Kevin Costner, though, horribly miscast. <laughs> I don't know whose decision that yeah. was, but um, Alan Rickman and, kind and of no, saves probably that no. Movie. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, he's he's good in it. Yeah, yeah he's very good. But they but, probably didn't make um, uh, Kevin Costner have to do a like a, a like a test screening ahead of time and try out his British accent. Yeah, he was on the top of the world after doing Dances with Wolves. They just wanted him in every movie. Yeah. Uh, so right, right. But <clears throat> the theme he crafts for that film is one of the all. If we were just doing film themes, it, it would definitely mm -hmm. be in my top ten. It, it is absolutely incredible. Um, and yeah. uh, that's another Blu-ray I have with the uh isolated score but it's not you don't get to watch the movie with it it's just kind of a still image mm -hmm. with the score playing over it but uh excellent warner oh, okay. brothers i actually realized warner brothers uses that theme to promote their movies like if you'll put in a random warner brothers <laughs> blu-ray i know what you're talking about yeah. it'll that theme will right. play over like a montage uh -huh. of all their movies uh right so right. that's how good it is they're like we have to use this theme yeah, yeah, more than just yeah. this one place <laughs> 
Uh, so I had to yeah. put Cayman on on the list yeah. just for those. But uh, yeah, I really wanted to talk about Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, because it's one of those great themes in a not great movie that I'll watch the movie just to listen to the score, basically, because it's just <laughs> right. that good. Right. So, yeah, yeah he's, he's well, my number five. That's a great pick. Um, yeah, Michael Kamen. Um, I let you sort of pass over X-Men, but I wanted to circle back mm, to that. Um, sure. His themes in that, especially the theme near the beginning when yeah. um, a young Magneto is being taken away and he, this this incredible yes. emotional thing is happening. That theme is unreal you know and and there there's yeah. there's some later themes too uh i almost mm -hmm. i i thought about this one for my top 10 it didn't quite yeah. make the cut yeah but uh there's some stunning uh music in yeah. that in that film that he wrote for it absolutely and then um before his passing i wanted to mention too um do you know about the metallica um tie-in um because you mentioned that he, yeah. he's got some some films where uh there's like some you know rock elements and that kind of thing yeah well somehow he got um he introduced to the group Metallica okay. and he actually um, he worked with them to rewrite orchestral versions of the songs of some of their hits. And then he proceeded to go on tour with them. This is, you know, 15 plus years ago before right. he died. Yeah. He proceeded to go on tour with them and do his version, his orchestral additions to these rock songs oh. with Metallica in concert. Wow. Just, you know, pretty interesting. He was very kind interesting. of a, a trailblazer in that sense. Yeah. Uh, but, he never got oh. very far into it and then passed away unfortunately so wow wow that's that's really interesting that's cool yeah yeah i did not know that great well now we're on to our number fours what's your number who's your number four my number four is randy edelman and i had mentioned him before mm -hmm. um he's a guy that most people probably have seen many of his films but okay. he just he's never been nominated uh, he's another one of these guys yeah he's american he started out actually in rock music mm. um he, a few of few of my guys here on this list <laughs> started out that way in rock yeah. music and then it sort of went into um film score uh yeah. composing and uh you know some of the ones that he, i mean he's got some really really great ones last of the mm. mohicans is a great score mm. um yeah. dragon the bruce lee story gettysburg gods mm. and generals yeah. um the Ma the mask tall tale okay. the quest dragon heart mm. numerous ones of these yeah. i potentially could have put in my top 10 but they they weren't quite enough but they, right. they've all got several themes yeah that are really good sure. and so he's just an sort of an unsung um <laughs> master at his craft yeah. and i had to had to show him some love that's great yeah i'm glad we're getting to highlight these guys who don't get mm -hmm. uh, talked about a lot uh that's that's good so yeah, cool. Yeah, th th those movies you mentioned, like Dragonheart is one that stands out as, yeah, I like that music a lot. Um, I've yeah, watched that movie yeah. num numerous times. So, yeah, good mm -hmm. pick for sure. My number four is uh, Michael Giacchino. Uh, Michael Giacchino, yeah, yeah. I, I think he's, you know, he he's only 54. He's, he's a pretty relatively new um, composer. He just he started in the late 90s. He actually started with um, video games. Um, that's oh, how he okay. got his start. I think he did one of the Medal of Honor games and got mm -hmm. a lot of recognition for that. You know, he, he's, as I mentioned before, collaborated with Pixar numerous times, uh, specifically Brad Bird, yeah. um, the director mm -hmm. of Incredibles. Um, Ratatouille, I think, has a really good uh, score as well. He's, he's done various other films, Mission Impossible 3, as well as Ghost Protocol, um, also by Brad Bird. He collaborated with the Wachowskis on um, Speed Racer. Um, oh, have you seen that? I like that movie. I like yeah, that movie. Me yeah, me too. I like it a lot. It's so yeah, cool. It's and stuff. and the the score is so interesting in that uh, he he does this a lot. He takes you know Speed Racer is an old you know animated series. Um, he's worked on Star Trek. He's worked on uh, Planet of the Apes, the new trilogy. Um, Jurassic, you know, Jurassic World trilogy. He's worked on now Spider-Man. Uh, he just did the new Batman. So he's worked on these uh, kind of long running franchises. Mm -hmm. And he's been able to, I think, incorporate the kind of classic themes that people know and like with his own kind of fresh spin on it, which I think is very difficult, um, you know, to, to make something old feel new. Uh, and yeah. he, he definitely does that with, uh, I feel like Star Trek and with, uh, apes, especially, um, mm -hmm. he was very, very inspired by Jerry Goldsmith's score with the original apes movies. Gotcha. He had that record on, on vinyl when he was a kid and listened to it oh. over and over again. Uh, I've heard him, him mention nice. that in interviews before. So 
Yeah, he, he does great on everything. Um, John Carter is one that I like. Um, he's good friends with J.J. Abrams as well. He did uh, Super 8. Um, he did uh, Doctor Strange, which I think is, is another really good theme. Um, I like his work on um, Coco, another Pixar movie that is very musically oh. driven. That whole story mm -hmm. is about a, a, a musician. And so that one's really well done. Uh, yeah, so he, he's done so many that I like. Uh, there's there's so many here up, of course, I mentioned as one that was very, very close to making my top 10. Um, and his latest work, I mentioned The Batman, I think was so well done. Uh, that score is so unique, uh, which is, again, difficult. That, that's one that he's, he totally reinvented. He didn't try to harken back to any previous Batman movie yeah. and tried to just do something totally fresh, which is really hard. Um, when there's been you know what 10 batman movies at this point yeah uh, but i thought he he pulled it off definitely it's it's a very unique sound um that he achieved there yeah. um yeah yeah jacchino he's i think uh in a very relatively short amount of time he's become one of the best uh, of all time yeah that that's that's a good pick that's quite a resume uh, <laughs> and uh in different genres and stuff so i mean um yeah that's that's very impressive. Good it pick. is. And he's already been nominated for two Oscars and he won uh, an Oscar mm. for Up. So. Okay. All right. We're on to your number three. What is it? My number three is James Newton Howard. And oh. uh, sadly, I didn't have one of his in my top 10, but it was yeah. very, very close at times. Yeah. Um, he's an American composer. He's, you know, collaborated with Hans Zimmer a few times uh, on, on Batman and, and the sequels and whatnot. But Right. Uh, he's, he's got over a hundred films in his resume, um, wow. nine Oscar nominations, mm. and he's yeah. done films like the fugitive, um, grand Canyon, grand Canyon mm -hmm. was the first time I, I saw his work or okay. heard his work. Sure. And I just, I loved it. You know, that's early nineties, uh, yeah. going back there. Um, the right. sixth sense, there's some great music signs. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously he's a frequent collaborator of M night. Yeah. Um, and uh, kind of his go-to um, and, and he uh, performs uh, very well sure. and uh, but the the film I really wanted to mention is the M. Night film The Village because oh, yeah. um, and I, mean, I very briefly mentioned it at the beginning it's just one that um, if not for a couple tracks that are just kind of that interface horror and are just mm -hmm. freaky freaky to listen to mm -hmm. um, this would be one I probably would put in for the whole family to still be kind of freaked out about sure, but, right. <laughs> uh, but to enjoy and probably would have been yeah. in my top five of all time because the right. music in the village is so beautiful yeah so yeah, yeah that's that's why i gotta bring in jnh as i call him today <laughs> right on this yeah. one that's my number three yeah he's a good pick he he's uh yeah he's really good his collaborations with uh m night are just i think that's that's his best stuff it's so so well done um, on to my number three, I went back and I wanted to look at some guys that were early Hollywood, you know, where, where did kind of film scores start, you know, where, where did, where did we begin with this whole thing? And there were several names that came up. Um, uh, Bernard Herman was one, uh, that did some great work, uh, with, uh, Hitchcock, um, there was a guy named El Elmer Bernstein that I found who did a lot of mm -hmm. great work, including, um, 10 commandments and great escape magnificent seven. Um, but the one I settled on for my number three is a guy named Max Steiner. Mm -hmm. This guy was composing. I mean, you're talking early days, Hollywood, the 1930s, uh, mm -hmm. is when he, when he got his start 24 Oscar nominations. Whoa. Uh, yeah, yeah. Three wins. Um, over his career, um, he ha lived 83 years. He passed away in 1971 and uh, was composing basically up until um, his death uh, in, in the 60s, I think, is when he retired. But he did stuff like the original King Kong, you know, kind of your classic mm -hmm. original adventure theme, uh, you know, music with uh, horror elements in there and the kind of romantic side. He did movies like Dodge City, which is an early Western starring Errol Flynn. Um, he did Gone with the Wind. He did Sergeant York, mm. which is a, a, an old war movie. Uh, Casablanca, one of the all-time great films ever. It's kind of the romance score. Uh, it's, it's really, really well done. He incorporates some Middle Eastern uh, uh, instruments in that one as well. Uh, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. And the Searchers, uh, which is one of my favorite westerns ever. So yeah, yeah. he kind of covered every genre 
um, mm -hmm. worked with many great directors. Uh, so I had to include them just because I, I wanted some yeah. of that um, classic old Hollywood feel, mm -hmm. you know, which inspired all the guys that we're talking about that are uh, sure. modern composers, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. they've, they've looked back at him and his work and um, have no doubt been inspired by what he's done and kind of built on it um, over the years. So yeah, um, for sure. yeah, Max Steiner, check him out if you haven't heard of him. Well, that's, that's probably good to call out uh, somebody that was a pioneer and yeah. that accomplished too. That's pretty amazing. I'm going to the record of nominations for scores <laughs> or any, any category. All right. On to your number two, what you got? My number two is James Horner. Um, oh, excellent. Yeah. Uh, American composer. Um, sadly, he died uh, seven years ago in a plane crash. He was piloting the plane. Yeah. Um, age 62. He no doubt he worked right up until that point. So he no doubt would probably still be, um, you know, uh, doing some uh, film scores. Yeah. He uh, had 10 Oscar nominations, two wins, both for Titanic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another guy that started out in rock music, actually. Oh, OK. And um, I, I will say some of his scores, uh, there's a lot of um, music that you feel like you've heard in another score. He's yeah. definitely probably the chief offender of this that I okay. could say. Yeah. That said, the music, um, he's got some great scores. So yeah. I don't I don't want to diminish it. I mean, obviously, right. I think he's the number two guy right. of all time. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the ones that, uh, well, he did the music for Willow, you know. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Um, glory is is a great mm, one um, yes. he did the rocketeers music yep um apollo 13's music is fantastic mm. i consider that for my top 10 same yeah. with um titanic yeah. same with mask of zorro yeah um he's yeah. just i mean there's so many but mm. uh but another great one yeah it's too bad that uh he took that flight or departed on that flight i looked into him as well and one of his earliest works is a uh, roger corman production he got started with those oh. kind of b movies <laughs> sci-fi b movies uh he did gotcha. battle beyond the stars uh, i don't oh. know if you've heard of that i've actually seen no. it i i kind of like oh. it it's very very really? cheesy um oh, very okay. silly like it for uh, that reason yeah yeah it's one of those yeah. um, so bad but, it's good right exactly exactly okay. so yeah but the, the music on it's good of course did star trek 2 wrath of khan uh which is which is an excellent one um aliens uh with with jim cameron of course they collaborate several times together um he did an animated uh, two animated films that i really like an american tale and mm. the sequel five will goes west uh really like the music in those i'm a big western fan and they have a lot of great western vibes in there um field of dreams i think is a great score as well that he composed yeah. uh legends of the fall he did braveheart uh, which is an, an all-timer, I think. Yeah, I forgot too. to mention that one. That one I also uh, considered for my top 10. It was in there for a while, but yeah. Yeah, Braveheart is, is excellent. Um, yeah, it is. It is really uh, good. Jumanji, I like a lot. He did that one. Yeah, Mask of Zorro, that was another one that was actually in my top 10 for a while mm -hmm. as well. Um, so that is is definitely one of my favorites. So yeah, yeah. he's done so many good ones. He, he also um, doesn't get enough credit for the work he did on the amazing Spider-Man, the Spider-Man reboot um, that I know not, not a lot of pop people like that movie. I really enjoy it. Yeah. And I think his music is so good. Um, in probably it. the best part of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It, it probably <laughs> is. You're right. Um, but uh, uh, he, he did a good job with that. Um, we'll, gotcha. we'll talk further about that movie on our spider cast uh, whenever we yeah, do that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good, good pick. Good pick Horner. He's uh, yeah, he's up there with, with some of the best. Mm -hmm. So, Excellent, excellent choice. My number two is Hans Zimmer. Um, Hans Zimmer is. I've heard of him. Yeah, <laughs> he's been mentioned a couple times already. Uh, so, yeah, he, he's just excellent. I mean, what can you say about the guy? He, he's he's a, a genius when it comes to music. Um, a genius when it comes to storytelling. Uh, he he does that with his films. That's why directors want to work with him all the mm -hmm. time, and he's worked on hundreds of films over his uh, career um, really got his start in the eighties. Um, his kind of breakout was uh, rain man um, yeah. was, was an early film that he did. Uh, he's got, uh, I think 10 Oscar nominations uh, that I counted uh, two wins. Um, he just won for Dune um, the new Dune film. He just won the Oscar for that. And that is an extremely experimental 
uh, unique score, uh, even among his, which, you know, he's kind of known for branching out and doing all kinds of different things, but yeah, he's doing a lot of interesting stuff with, with instruments there and, and with voices, uh, yeah. there that, that is very, very, very cool. Uh, very mm -hmm. different. So, um, you also, of course, one for the lion King, which is one of my right. top five favorite movies of all time. Incredible yeah. score. Yeah. Uh, great, uh -huh. great stuff there. Um, I'll rattle off a few others. Prince of Egypt uh, is another animated movie he did that uh, is phenomenal. Uh, he does uh, great work on another. He does a lot of animation. I didn't really realize this until I looked into it further. Um, but Spirit, Stallion of the Cimarron is an uh, animated film that he worked on, which is wonderful. We already mentioned Pirates and Sherlock Holmes, which are two of my favorites. Um, Inception, that's kind of a groundbreaking one that kind of everybody else tried to copy after he did it <laughs> you kind of heard those big horns and i think every trailer after that exactly. movie came out so yeah uh that's that's a great <laughs> one um rango is another animated one that i really like another one with kind of western vibes to it a uh, rush uh which we talked about recently yeah, on our ron yeah. howard podcast that i think is a right. really good one as well another spider-man the amazing spider-man 2 Definitely the best part of this movie is Hans Zimmer's score. Oh, he you works... don't like that one too much, huh? No, I'm not a big fan of that one. It has its moments, but I'm not yeah. a big fan of that one. That one, uh, he collaborated with this group. I think he formed, they ended up calling themselves the Magnificent Six. Uh, yeah. It was another group of like drummers and different kinds of musicians mm -hmm. that okay. um, all helped him out uh, oh. crafting some songs on that one that were really different and, and a lot of fun. Um, mm -hmm. Another one I'll mention is Dunkirk. That he did that that one you really get the that whole movie is kind of is about the sense of urgency and time is running mm -hmm. out and you get that in the score very clearly um so i like that one too so yeah hans uh i have a feeling we're about to talk to talk about him a little bit more um but uh, he's he's number two because he has to be i mean I, I just had no choice he's just that good uh so hans is my Number two favorite uh, composer of all time. Now we're on to your number one. My number one. Who is it? He's sitting right there. He's sitting right I never behind even you. introduced him. Yeah. Uh, come on in, Hans. Uh, <laughs> I've been listening this whole time. Yeah, he's been um, quietly waiting for his name to come up. <laughs> if, if, I, if I didn't say Hans, uh, people would say, how can it not be Hans? What right. are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, um, you said a lot of what I uh, needed to say uh, to make the point. But by the way, he also started out in rock music. Um, oh. And so you get a lot of those early scores like uh, Days of Thunder and right. some of those early on where you hear a lot of guitar. And I think sure. he himself plays guitar. He does. And uh, I'll mention does a few of live concerts yeah. where he yeah, plays yeah, guitar right. with his orchestra, which is sure, cool. Sure, sure. Yeah. I think I've watched some of those. Yeah, um, I'd fun. love to see him, but they don't come around these parts. Right. Um, but some of the other scores I want to mention, The Rock um, oh, is yeah. uh, a tremendous score. And that mm -hmm. that first scene with Ed Harris when he's walking through the graveyard and he's talking about mm -hmm. what he's got to do and that and Hans's music is is uh, playing and, and the rain's coming down. I mean, it's just uh, it's just a great score. It's it's yep. it's all action pretty much, though. Yeah. Um, but there's some really good themes in it. It was yeah. one that, again, that I considered for my top 10. Mm -hmm. um, Rain Man was one that I, I played so many times. So oh, um, that yeah. was one of the first scores I ever uh, played on repeat, you know, okay. that, probably back to the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> another really good one is Pearl Harbor. Um, okay. has some really great themes throughout and, and mm. some varied themes as well. Another yeah. one I consider for my top. It couldn't be all Hans. I can't have a top 10. Right. They're all Tom, Hans Zimmer. You'd right. be like, get out sure. of here. Come on. <laughs> right. Watch any other movies. Right. <laughs> uh, another one, um, Da Vinci Code. Again, oh. several really great themes. I considered okay. it for my top 10. Okay. Great score. Um, uh, I talked about Batman Begins enough. Um, sure. The Thin Red Line um, has kind of oh. one theme that's really, really good. It's kind of mm. one, a, a one themer, okay. but it's really good. Um, Tears of the Sun see. has some good tracks and one really, yeah. really great track, which actually is credited to Steve Jablonski, um, but I'm sure okay. Hans had his hand in it. Sure. And that one's really good. Yeah. Um, Crimson Tide is another one that there's one really great theme and it is a sweet theme um mm -hmm. it plays over the end credits of the movie and the yeah. first time i was 
I was walking out of the movie and I actually stopped and listened to the theme because I'm like, oh. whoa, like <laughs> uh, the movie lets sort of like this um, sort of uh, tense, like uh, sort of bass heavy kind of uh, throbbing music throughout the film, but it never really um, at moments maybe, but the, the, you don't actually get to hear the the main piece of the score, I think, right. until the very end of the film as the credits yeah. are rolling. But it's, sure. just, it's, it's a one themer though, but mm-hmm. it, it's a really, really good theme. Um, Black Hawk Down has oh, some really great yeah. themes as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I could do an hour in Hans. Sure. Um, so how much time do I have? <laughs> no, he's, he's yeah. number one. He's great. Me. Great pick. Great pick for your number one. Uh, my number one, of course, is John Williams. The great John Williams. Are you surprised? <laughs> I'm very yeah. surprised. Yeah. Right, no, it right. makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, I, I said it before. He's just so many themes, so many uh, films that are so iconic popular you can hum it uh, as soon as you hear it you know what it is no one else i think even comes close uh, as far as doing that i didn't know this until doing the research uh has more oscar nominations than anyone in history other than disney uh, walt disney is the only one who i think has one or two more but he has 52 oscar nominations <laughs> uh it's yeah like every year times two basically it's incredible <laughs> um he's won five times he won for fiddler on the roof he won for jaws uh the original star wars et the extraterrestrial and schindler's list um mm-hmm. which all of those that's a great are... score too schindler yeah oh yeah absolutely I- incredible mm-hmm. and uh, again you know just to reiterate he's he's a great storyteller he's a great collaborator Obviously, his collaboration with Spielberg is legendary at this point. They've done so many films together. Uh, it's it's really amazing what they've been able to accomplish. Um, I don't think any other director, composer collaboration uh, has matched what they've been able to do um, over their very long careers. Currently, he's 90 years old. He just celebrated his 90th birthday this year, oh. and uh, he's still composing. <laughs> it's incredible. He's Right now, working on the fifth Indiana Jones movie, which is wow. amazing. So uh, he's indicated he may be retiring after that. Um, mm. He hasn't confirmed anything yet, but um, that would be a, a good one to end on, I think. Uh, so I'll just go through some of his highlights. Before you know his collaborations with Spielberg, he worked in the 60s. He worked on movies like The Killers, which is a good uh, noir film that I like. Um, How to Steal a Million. Uh, which is a fun heist movie, The Cowboys, which is a John Wayne film, um, The Long Goodbye, and then began his his collaborations with Spielberg on The Sugarland Express, uh, and their next film together was Jaws, which uh, won him the Oscar. And that score for Jaws, you know, it's very recognizable. It's very simple, um, but mm-hmm. simple sometimes is what's best for the movie. And yeah, that's definitely yeah. one of those cases where, he just really needed two notes. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. really is all it is. Mm-hmm. When he played it for Spielberg, Spielberg thought he was joking. Uh, he thought, two notes, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm paying you to do this. You know, you've got to do a little bit more. But when he saw it in the finished film, he thought this is exactly what it needs and mm-hmm. exactly what, what works for the movie. So Close Encounters, I already mentioned, kind of music is incorporated into that story in a really uh, interesting way. E.T., you know, the sense of wonder that you get from mm-hmm. that. Um, very kind of hopeful it has also very very emotional kind of sad moments in there as well um, empire of the sun is a great one uh he did home alone uh oh. which is another iconic one uh yeah hook which is not a movie that i'm a huge fan of i, I don't mind it i just don't think it's yeah. one of spielberg's yeah. best exactly. um but the music in it is very good very very good mm. score there um he did the music for jfk uh, oh. which I think is a, is a good score as well. One of my favorite movies I've mentioned here before, Far and Away. Uh, I think he crafted oh, yeah. a good theme there. Jurassic Park, one of the best ever. Yeah. Uh, right, right. Mentioned uh, Schindler's List. Uh, Saving Private Ryan, another mm-hmm. yeah. all-timer. Um, the Patriot, he did that, mm. uh, that music as well. Uh, Harry Potter, that's another big franchise that, uh, he only did the scores yeah. for the first three, but they reused them, of course, uh, in the in the ensuing films. Uh, and it's just uh, it's just excellent, excellent work there. 
Minority Report, I think, is a really good and, and different type of score than what you're used to with him. Mm. Um, another different one uh, that came out the same year is also with Spielberg, um, Catch Me If You Can, oh, which yeah. has kind of a lighter, funner, kind of more uh, mm-hmm. uh, jazz influence score than what yeah. he typically does. War of the Worlds, yeah. another big one. Uh, movie i know know you enjoy as well um yeah. munich uh oh that's a good one that's yeah. a great one i really like so so many uh so many over the years <laughs> so many and and uh you know he's just i think the greatest because of of all he's been able to accomplish over such a again a, a long career and so many different types of movies you know he can be accused of kind of um doing the same kinds of things. It is always kind of a big orchestral score. Um, but I think the fact that he's doing that while also making each theme distinct, um, I don't think people get confused when they listen to uh, Jurassic and then they listen to Star Wars. They can tell the difference. Um, and it's not just because of, of uh, the, the great um, thing he's able to do in the music um but but the mu- movies you know matching the 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 music and the type of music with the images on screen uh, is what he's so good at um and so yeah he, he had to be my number one um because i can hum more of his tunes than anybody else yeah yeah and, and um and you said exactly what i wanted to say when i when i was going to chime in which is that uh there's really nobody that comes anywhere close to him as far as writing themes that are recognizable. Yeah. And um, despite all of the themes that I put on this list, you ask nine out of 10 people on the street. I mean, they might rec- they probably wouldn't even recognize the names, but if you <laughs> said, do you remember the theme from interstellar? They'll be like, interstellar did i like they they, right. they don't even know what the movie is much sure. less like oh yeah <laughs> da, 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 da. like i mean he's done so many that are just yeah. uh that stand out mm-hmm. and it's it's him and then and there's everybody else so right. I, I get why number one um yeah yeah you know for that reason and many others so i mean it's right. it's a great pick and that um kind of leads us um into um uh, we want if we want to do honorable mentions yeah absolutely um, I would put him at number um, six if I was doing a top six. Great. Uh, because um, as I go back and look, there's so many that are great themes. And then um, some that I even have, you know, if I did a top 50, I would put in there as well. And it's not that I think that uh, Raiders isn't a great theme. It's just for my taste, it's a little, um, it's great for the movie when I'm watching the movie, but yeah, maybe a little happy for what I'm looking for sure. out of a, a score. If I'm looking for something that's really deep and then right. and uh, not so light, but again, yeah. it's not a criticism. It's just a different kind of score. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would put, I would put him at six and I, I don't, I can't really argue against anybody putting him at, at number one because of what he's accomplished. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. I mentioned some honorable mentions as well. Um, mm-hmm. Danny Elfman. Uh, was he's, a guy he's another one I was going to mention yeah as honorable yeah. mention yeah he, he's so good and and mm-hmm. so many again iconic themes Batman uh, I mentioned Spider-Man Men in Black yeah. he did which is great That's a lot of collaborations yeah. with uh Burton um right. Tim Burton and him work together a lot so he, he does some strange quirky stuff you know he, he's done uh stuff like Nightmare Before Christmas um, which is more of a musical but um he does good work with with you know other directors like goodwill hunting um is him uh you know he did um meet the robinsons which is an underrated animated movie that i like mm. uh so yeah he, he's got several really really good ones so yeah i had to had to mention elfman because he's if i can good. yeah if i can throw one in there too ever where it says her hands um yes the, the theme for that is just delightful and it it, it's it's very very specific though but i really like the music in it um you know but it's one that again if i did a top 50 it's got to be in there um it's very enchanting and and one of one of the best scores i've heard yeah yeah i would agree it's very very good um Mm -hmm. so yeah elfman's work is is excellent had to mention alan silvestri as well Um, oh sure yeah this guy just the the amount of scores he's done is incredible looking at yeah. everything going back to of course back to the future to predator mm-hmm. 
Um, he did, uh, you know, Forrest Gump, of course. Uh, again, worked with Zemeckis a lot. I like his work on um, Stuart Little. I think Stuart mm. Little has some really, really good music in it um, mm. that a lot of people don't don't talk about enough. Um, Night at the Museum. He crafted a really good theme for that uh, trilogy of movies as well. And uh, of course, his stuff with the MCU, uh, both Captain America and the Avengers theme uh, yeah. is second to none. Uh, it's uh, really, really well good done. Good stuff. So, yeah. Yep. Yep. Had to mention him as well. One. Um, did you have any other honorable mentions you wanted to throw out? I mean, uh, I think you mentioned Harry Gregson Williams. He's another yeah. one. Um, there, there's there's numerous ones I could mention, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, John Williams and Danny Elfman were the other two that I wanted to really um, point out. If you hadn't brought up either of those guys, I was going to bring them up. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm glad we both had those on there because yeah, they're they're very yeah. good. Um, John Powell is another one I'll mention. Oh yeah, I like. yeah. Uh, I His think born, the born identity uh, music is really, really, really good. That was is. close to being in my top 10 actually. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's good. Um, I really like Thomas Newman as well. Um, yeah. And some really, really good ones. Skyfall and as well as Wally, which is uh, mm. one of my favorite Pixar movies he did. Yeah. Another one I'll mention on honorable mentions is Alexandra Desplat. He is a guy who's collaborated a lot with um, uh, Wes Anderson. I like his score on Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, Moonrise Kingdom is another one he did. Um, Fantastic Mr. Fox. I like that one too. Um, he did That's the a good last. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. I like that one. Uh, he did last two Harry Potter movies as well and did a good job um, with those. Curious Case of Benjamin Button. Um, he also collaborated with uh, Guillermo del Toro on The Shape of Water, which oh, is a score yeah. I really okay. enjoy too. That is a good so. score. Yeah. 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 Uh, I want to mention one about him. Um, uh, not a very well known film, but it's a mm. film called Curly Sue oh. uh, from 92, I think. Mm. Uh, okay. Jim Belushi. It's kind of mm. a, he, he plays a homeless man who has a daughter. They're both homeless and he tries to keep her alive and out of trouble and all this kind of stuff. Okay. Anyway, it's kind of a, a fun a little bit schmaltzy um yeah uh, kind of movie but uh he he did the music for that and it's some out outstanding music um mm. if you ever get a chance to look it up uh the themes in it are are tremendous and yeah. again if my top 10 if i could somehow squeeze it in but i mean it's definitely top 50 it's a great yeah. score right okay cool yeah i'll de definitely check that one out the last guy i'll mention is a guy named john barry um he's another one of oh, these sure, guys yeah that uh, was around uh, early in the um, you know 50s 60s era. He did uh, the James Bond theme, which is one of the most iconic themes ever. Oh, he wrote that. Did he, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, yeah, he worked on the that. first first Bond film, Doctor No, um, hmm. which is celebrating its 60th anniversary this year. I found out. Um, wow. So we might have to do a James Bond podcast soon, but. Yeah, he, he did great work there. Um, the fact that that theme has endured throughout the, yeah. the 60 years of Bond, that thing has not yeah. changed. You know, six How different many actors. Movies, like 25 20, movies. Yeah, something? 25 movies, I think. Uh, yeah. And they've kept that music Crazy. the same because it's just so good. Um, he also did yeah. Zulu, which is a good movie that I like. Oh, yeah. He did yeah. good music on that. Um, the Lion in Winter, um, Midnight Cowboy. He did the 76 oh. version of King Kong and he did a movie I'm a huge fan of called the black hole. This is a Disney film writing on the coattails of star Wars. They kind of wanted their own sci-fi oh. movie and uh, it's a lot, it's a lot darker. It definitely has a lot of humor and kind of silly stuff in it, but um, it gets pretty dark and the, the score reflects that um, it's, it's pretty heavy synthy, um, but it's, it's also got big orchestral stuff behind it too. Um, very interesting score that I really enjoy. So, um, check out the black hole. It's on Disney plus right now. Um, so you can, you can watch that there. Yeah. Um, I think he also did dance it with wolves. Were you going to mention that one too? Did um, he? Oh, okay. Yeah. And the, the main theme that John Dun Dunbar main theme, mm -hmm. um, it, it's another one that it's a great theme and I, I, I can't put it in my top 10 or probably even my top 50 because it's just one theme, but right. it's a really, really great theme that he wrote yeah. for that film. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, right. Right. Yeah. It's a good, good work there. All right. That will do it for us here on the real world podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for being with me again, Bert. Yep. Glad to be here.
Yeah, this was a fun one. A lot of fun uh, research went into this one. Uh, let us know your favorite film scores in the comments below. Give us your top 10 and your favorite composers. Also, be sure to give us a like, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to get notifications of all the videos we do here at The Real World. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you next time.